Yep. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, God. Oh, God, help us. It's the Wolf Den podcast. Oh. Just when you thought it was safe. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hi. How you doing? Hello, everybody. I got a new USB hub for okay. this computer. I just put it in. Okay. And that way, the cameras should all stay on. The last two podcasts, all the cameras yeah. just cut out. So uh, last podcast, I silently turned them off. Okay. You, you might not have realized. You might, if 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 the if it stops cutting, you know, yeah, maybe something went wrong silently. Right. Okay. Uh, but anyway, well, well, hopefully things will go better now. Uh, how you doing? I'm good. I'm doing That's good. All right. Did good. you notice there's a there are a lot, lot of boxes. boxes yes. In don't, front. You don't can't think that see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think that went unnoticed on my account. You can't see at home, but there are a lot of boxes yeah. at our feet. I went to the P.O. box today, and they gave me a shopping cart. <laughs> that has never happened. Like, all the times I'd had to go, like, they let me keep the box, like, the big... Yeah, they, like, sometimes post. they give you, like, a mailbox. Yeah. No, they gave me a shopping wow. cart. Wow. What did you get? <laughs> We'll find out okay. throughout the episode. I think I'm just going to start opening boxes. I think boxes. that's for the best, honestly. The whole episode will be just <laughs> us tearing through boxes. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to thank all Abdullah for the 14 months. Willow Davis for the 30 months. No crinkling that chip bag near the mic. Oh, we're gonna. Oh, don't tempt this us. This is going to be your favorite flavor, Willow. <laughs> and also Ray Zeppelin. Thank you for the 57 months. Is that Optimus Prime? Oh, Optimus Pride. I see. No, but if I ever see an Optimus Pride figure, I'm going to buy it because my All wife right. would love that. Explain it. What? This? Pri Pride. It Optimus Pride. What oh, is that? A gay Optimus Prime. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's fine. My brain went Pride in America. Oh. <laughs> That's where my brain went. No. See, I, I, I live in a different house where like okay. Pride is the gay kind of pride. Well, I don't live with my par <laughs> our parents anymore. True, so. yeah. So we don't need to worry about <laughs> we that. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, Optimus is here because it's Prime Day again for oh, some reason. Oh, yeah. What the hell's with I that? I don't know. It's today and tomorrow. Like, usually I do the joke where I card out old Optimus and I make a big deal about our Lord, Lord and Savior Orion Pax ascending to become Optimus Prime. I'm not going to do that because I did it already this fucking year. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did this. <laughs> yeah, they're doing it again. That's so stupid. I have in my cart. Last time I didn't buy anything. That Right now I have in my cart um, G.I. Joe classified spirit because he comes with an eagle and it looks cool. Uh, and uh, Ghost of Tsushima PS5 edition because oh. those are both on sale. But I'm holding off. Because New York Comic Con is this weekend, oh. and I'm probably not going to see Ghost of Tsushima there, but it's a very good chance I will see G.I. Joe's there yeah. for the same price. So I don't know whether this Well, just... I would... If, if you're thinking they're going to be the same price, I would say just or get it on Amazon. Yeah. I'm thinking I'll buy it on Amazon, but I'll do the delayed delivery, because mm -hmm. you get 6% back instead of 5% back. Uh, so I'll do the delayed delivery, and if I do see it at Comic Con for comparable, I'll just cancel the order. True. That's yeah. a good point. The only thing I have in my cart is uh, tips for my soldering iron, mm. and not not like not like tips on how to use it, like, right. like literal tips for. Uh, and you know what? It is a Prime Day deal. I didn't realize it. Wait, did it end? Hold on. When you click on it, it says eighteen fifty, but in the cart it says fifteen nineteen Prime deal. So do I have the deal? It Hold might on. be one of those things where it's a lightning deal and you have to like... Did I lose it? Hold on. Oh, no, it's still there. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to proceed to check out. All right. Yeah, just do it. I didn't I didn't, I, I didn't know it was a prime deal. I just put yeah. them in the cart because I was like, I need these. I had things in my cart and then I waited too long and then they were all sold out and the prices like skyrocketed. So I figured, no. Uh... I almost bought wireless lavalier mics from a no-name company, but I'm like... I'm brothers with Wolf Den. I'll just yeah. You don't do it. Yeah. Uh, don't you? Oh, I took them from you, didn't I? What the labs? Didn't I take the labs? From I think you? I have mine. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. You can have the other one. I just, okay. I just don't no serves no purpose to me right, well, because they're phantom power. What you? It's so the, the annoying. Ta the Taz cam was still phantom yeah, power. Yeah. No, you can plug it into that. Uh, what was I gonna say? It was regarding Prime Day. I got I a bunch know. of shit delivered today. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know Prime Day was happening. Maybe I would have <laughs> held off. Oh, because you talked about um, soldering iron tips. I saw a video. Apparently now there is a mod for the PlayStation 2. It's an HDMI out mod. Yeah. 
So I was watching a video on like how to install it, thinking, oh, maybe I'll do this with my PlayStation 2. No, it's no, probably no, extremely it's, it's, convoluted. It's convoluted yeah. and complex. So I will wait for a plug and play solution if that ever happens. Um, Well, I mean, you already got uh, component, right? I have component. Yeah. But the problem is like... If, you like, need a component TV. You, I have a component. The problem is... When you output it, is it outputting at the proper resolution? Is it going to look like crap and whatnot? I need right. something that, I need to something that will just assume that the PS two is a four eighty four eighty i device mm -hmm. and just output it or upscale it to the proper resolution on its own without me having to fiddle in the settings of each game. We need Eon to get going with exactly their next, with their next exactly. Thing. That's what we need. Uh, open these chips. Okay. Did you look at them at all? Okay. Yes, I did. They are... <laughs> as loudly as you possibly can. Italian red meat flavor. <laughs> Lay's chips. These are Chinese, I think. <coughs> okay. Yes, these are Chinese. I got them at a candy store. Okay. I, I, I tweeted a picture of the beef Wellington flavored ones. I saw that. And, and somebody wrote, uh, you should have saved these for the podcast. Little did they know. Yeah. I had Italian red meat flavored willow your favorite flavor of chip i'm saying that because he is a vegan mm, it's my condolences these don't smell like so, so so it says italian red meat flavor but the picture is clearly uh pasta Bo sauce yeah it's like a bolognese, bolognese sauce yeah uh I, I don't really get the flavor it doesn't smell like it smells like a like a puff pastry yeah i mean it's a chip I, I have mild hints of tomato. I don't really taste any meat in there. I'm not getting anything. Yeah, exactly. Usually these flavored chips taste eerily like what they... Yeah, and like overwhelmingly. These just taste like potato chips with a little bit of tomato. Mm -hmm. It's a fail. Oh. Big Lay's fail. Yeah. Okay, maybe a little meat now. If I think hard enough, maybe I'll maybe I'll get it. Maybe it's one of those things where you have to put a fistful in your mouth mm -hmm. in order to get all the flavor and stuff, but I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of the meat flavor. You know, I'm getting a little olive oil. Makes sense. <laughs> all right. Uh, why are we here? We're here to talk about uh, <laughs> video games. We're here to talk about video games. We we should probably talk about the PlayStation that was announced today. Yeah, I feel like that's the biggest news of all that was announced, like within the last week. Wasn't yeah. a lot going on. Um, and then Sony's just like, "Hey, guess what? There's a new PlayStation." So, oh, good, he gave, he gave us something to talk about on the show. <laughs> I was shocked by this, even though we saw the leak already. Yes. Uh, I was shocked that some of the leak was true. Yes. Uh, that we're getting two different versions. There's a lot here. Yeah. Oh, look, the camera already died. <laughs> we're getting two different versions. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a little skeptical that the disk drive is removable, but it is. Yep. There's a lot more stuff yes. that's coming out about this that is a lot worse than I could have imagined. Yeah. It really. <laughs> Like, like I've been saying that they need a refresh for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that like they got... Since it launched. Since it launched. I'm glad that they got a refresh. Mm -hmm. But th there's things that I never even considered that yeah. they could have done that, yeah. they're, that they're doing and, and somehow messed up. So here it All is. Right. Okay. Uh, this is on the PlayStation blog written by Sid Schumann, the senior director of SIE Content Communications. As the holiday season approaches, we are excited to share that we have a new PS5 model launching. To address the evolving needs of players, our engineering and design teams collaborated on a new form factor that provides greater choice and flexibility. The same technology features that make the PS5 the best place to uh, the best to play are packed into a smaller form factor along with an attachable ultra hd blu-ray disk drive and a one terabyte ssd for more internal storage the new ps5 has been reduced in volume by more than 30 percent and by and weight by 18 percent and 24 percent compared to the previous models there are four separate cover panels with a top portion in a glossy look while the bottom remains in matte 
if you purchase the PS5 Digital Edition, you can add an Ultra HD Blu-ray disc drive to the PS5 later, as it will be sold separately for 80 US dollars. That's a lot of money. Yes. Uh, especially when we get into the prices of these models, it's a lot of money. That Yeah, it's a, so there's a slight... Pr- is there a price hike in other territories? Yeah. Or, well, well, that happened already. Yeah, so the, the regular PS5 model got a price hike in territories outside of the U.S. Okay. Um, as we keep reading, we'll get to the price of the new... These new versions. Okay. Okay. Uh, the new PS5 model will be available starting in November this year uh, in the U.S. at select retailers and at uh, PlayStation Direct uh, where where available. It will continue to roll out globally in the following months. Once inventory of the current PS5 model has sold out, the new PS5 will become the only model oh. available. Oh, I didn't, yeah. I didn't even know about that part. Yeah. I mean, that kind of makes sense. That's what happens with all the other Slim models. Okay. Once they run out of inventory, the original model, they stop making it. Mm-hmm. They just do the, the slim model from now on. So that kind of makes like that makes sense. I guess you know it's still kind of shock. It still feels like it's early in the life cycle of the PS5. I guess because you know now people actually have their hands on it's it. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been three years. Yeah. But like people are just now starting to get it. A friend of mine just bought it the other day. So was it 20... 2020 when 20... it came out? Twenty twenty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Here we go. The recommended retail prices for the new PS5 model are as follows, beginning with the rollout in November at participating retailers. So uh, it's on screen, but I'll just mention the U.S. price because we're the only country that matters. Um, The PS5 with Ultra HD Blu-ray disc drive. That's the disc drive PS5. The one that you want. Yes. (laughs) 500 U.S. dollars. That's that's the same price. Normal. That's yes. reasonable. That we knew was going to happen. Not a big deal. Yes. The PS5 Digital Edition without the disc drive, four hundred and fifty US dollars. That is a fifty dollar price increase from the old digital edition. Yes, that's very strange. Mm-hmm. I don't know how well the digital version did. Yeah. It's hard to tell. If people liked it, because people were just happy to get a PlayStation 5. Right. So it was hard to get for a while. Sometimes that was the only one that you can get your hands on. Yeah. So people just got it because it was there. So it's hard to tell whether or not people got it and liked it or got it and were just like, it is what it is. Yeah. So uh, it would have been nice to have a somewhat budget version of the PlayStation 5. Yeah. Only saving $50 and losing out on the whole disk drive yeah. is a huge L. And if you want to buy the disk drive later, that's another $80. So you yeah. wind up spending more money for the same thing. <laughs> so that I understand. I understand selling it separately for slightly more. Right. I don't understand selling it for... Thirty dollars more. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. I don't understand the base price being four fifty. Four fifty. That is way too much. It's their way of increasing the price of the system and trying to make you think they haven't increased the price yeah. of the system. Windows security. <laughs> I'm getting all these notifications. I also updated the graphics drivers on this computer. Oh. I edited over here uh, last night, and it was awesome. That monitor is sick. Nice. <laughs> Um, I like the Series S because it is cheaper. Yes. It gives people an option so, or, or like some sort of mid-range where like maybe they're not ready to make the full jump to 4K yeah. new console stuff, but they want to be able to play the new games. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a budget option for them. That, most people aren't using all of the tech that's in their brand new consoles. Right. So having something that removes some of the tech is not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like the idea of getting a system that doesn't have a disk drive, but for a significant discount, why not? Yeah. You know, that that's a good little little medium. But $50 doesn't seem like a significant discount. $50 is not a significant discount, especially when you consider the system is $500. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, $50 is $50, but yeah. you're already spending $500. Yeah. That's a little ridiculous. Uh, the reason why... It's so important to have a disk drive is because you can get 
uh, games a lot of the times physical for cheaper yes uh maybe used or or just big box retailers have deals a lot of times yeah. target every year like what is it, after black friday yeah. they do the buy two get one or something buy two get one free we used to go nuts and yeah. buy all the big triple a games mm -hmm. we wanted around then uh also too like with games being pulled from digital marketplaces left and right you know a lot of times this is the only way to play certain games is to yeah. have the physical version of it so yeah. not having a disc drive you could potentially lose out on playing a lot of games. That's true. Yeah. Well, a lot of games I, I I'd be, I want to see the video game history foundations to do a thing about how many games are releasing that don't actually have the game on the disc. Yeah. You know, cause like, uh, I don't know if a majority of games are releasing in a playable state anymore, like on the disc, yeah. like when they go gold, I don't know if the game's there. Yeah, probably not. I know a lot of games, the disc is just there for authentication. You yeah. download everything else. Yeah. So. Anyway, the, on screen now is a picture of the disc drive. So the, the that little piece of the panel mm -hmm. comes off and the disc drive kind of slots in. It's a weird shaped disc drive. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, it's a weird shaped system, so. Yeah. Uh, so that's how it works. I was a little skeptical that this was going to be a thing. I thought that this was just conjecture because it looked like the thing came off, yeah. the, that piece came off, but it looks like they're actually doing yeah. it. Um, but not only that, a horizontal stand will be included with the new PS5 model and a new vertical stand uh, compatible with all PS5 models will be sold separately for $30. So this is maybe the worst part <laughs> so i absolutely hate the the stand on the ps5 yeah the the one that comes with the current ps5 yeah it's a little complicated it's a little yeah. too complicated than it should be it's the system should just be a box that you put however you want in your living room yeah but instead there's this little circular base that's all black that you either have to screw into the bottom so it can stand vertically, mm -hmm. or you have to do this weird sort of hook thing so it can lay horizontally yeah. because it's such a weird, sh like, like curved shape that it can't lay flat horizontally. Yeah. It can stand up on its own vertically. There's really not much of a reason to have the base other than maybe a little bit more stability if your cat wants to jump on top of it. Yeah. But for the most part, it would be fine if it was vertical. But horizontal, you're kind of screwed. You need this whole little contraption when they could have just made the thing a rectangle. Yeah. Uh, now, you have to buy a stand to even put it in your living room at all <laughs> you have to buy a stand this is for a vertical position right but, so but the <sighs> but the horizontal are we gonna be okay with this look at this <laughs> i'm not okay with this that's the stand it comes with yeah a little it's tiny a little stand. toothpick kickstand yeah. yeah i don't know what the fuck is that thing <laughs> unless like they're not showing you what the actual vertical uh, horizontal kickstand is well it, it, it's got a connect in some other well, way that's the thing like i'm looking at the pictures and i don't see where a kickstand can come out of yeah i don't well it's a piece that it comes with right right it, 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 it specifically uh, it, says it's a horizontal stand will be included it, so that leads yeah. me to believe it's a separate piece yeah it doesn't seem like it's on it already right now i'm looking at it yeah no there's no there's no well, yeah no I, I don't think it's, it's like a piece that comes that, that like folds out it's a yeah. piece that you attach which is maybe worse because uh -huh. then you're you're falling into the same issue that you have with the current playstation 5 where no one's going to use the stand right yeah so in order to put this thing in your living room in order to place it in your in your living room setup you have to attach a piece yeah and you have it comes with this little shitty thing, or you have to purchase a thirty dollar accessory. Yeah. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be buying a five hundred and thirty dollar <laughs> device that I don't need. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's available tonight. No, uh, it's not. I I I, I checked. Yeah. Uh, it, it said uh, coming soon. Yeah, I think they said it ships in November. Yeah, which is insane. That's yeah. so much quicker than I was expecting. I will say the the fact that they're selling the vertical stand separately leads me to believe that this will stand vertically on its own. Because right. previous generations, the PS2 onward, and like even the Xbox 
360 and the Xbox One, uh, those could stand vertically on their own, but you could buy stands separately for extra stability. So at least it seems like it will just work on its own. It'll stand on its own. You can have the extra stand for better stability. And the fact that they made it compatible with the older models is a nice touch. The stand is compatible with yeah. the older models. Okay, yes. that's cool. That's good. Yeah. But then again, the older models come with the stand. Exactly. So. And you can't really, you can't stand it up without it. <laughs> yeah, the older model. Yeah. Well, you you can't lay it horizontal no. without it. No. And I honestly, I wouldn't trust laying it vertical without it. Yeah, it's a little top heavy. Yeah. It's a little, it, you can, it's just not recommended. Yeah. So this, we're assuming you can stand on its own, but that I wouldn't trust it either, yeah. honestly. So, uh, a squid vorb in the chat, and everybody's telling me to click on it, uh, posted a link from The Verge who did a size comparison. That's what I wanted to see, because I didn't, I haven't, um, I, w I haven't seen a size comparison. I don't love this size comparison because yeah. it doesn't show the full shape. It just shows it as like a, like a like, volume. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's hard to tell because the PS five is such a weird shape. Yeah. Like the wings make it look bigger than it actually is. Yeah. So I'm assuming this is from the top of the wing, but, uh, then again, it's not much smaller. Yeah. Look at how much smaller the series is x is yeah the series x is so much smaller and you can tell that's a series x just because of how it is i like, can mm -hmm. just look at it and be like that's a series x because there's not much more to it it's yeah. just a rectangle so that's kind of sad that it's not that much smaller there's a lot that's wrong with the playstation 5 that i think needs a mid-cycle refresh yeah uh one of the main things is the design of it and it's barely uh addressed here it's just like the the baby version of what it was it's slightly smaller which yeah. is it needed that it yes. needed to be slimmer um it's still a weird shape that is not practical in a real living room so you f that's a fail i feel like <sighs> So all the other slimmer models of like the previous PlayStation still kept certain design aesthetics of the older of the older models. Mm -hmm. So I think like they kind of screwed themselves. Well, like they ha if they're going to do a slim model of PS5, it has to still look like a PS5 in some way. You know, uh, in, in their own ideology, in yeah. their own design philosophy, but in 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 the real world, no, it does not. <laughs> in the real world, you can uh, you could change it. The, look, you're not wrong. There could have been a you know they could have done a black and white console that still kept like you know two thin white fins and like the black metal, and it not look dumb. Ju ju just allow it to stand on its own. Yeah. That's such an obvious thing yeah. to want out of your console is for it to sit. It just sit. <laughs> I just want to place it. And yeah. you can't just place it. You got to do something about it. And the all like it's curved. That's the design philosophy of this yeah. generation of PlayStation. It's got a little curve on it. Curve the top. I don't want to put anything on top of it. You shouldn't want to put anything you know, on the, top the of it. The Xbox 360 was curved. The original model, at least, was curved. And that that you could lay flat, like, without a stand. 360. Yeah. Uh, it had, like, that curve shape. Yes. But you could, yeah, you could. it was you flat lay, on both flat, sides. Yeah. Uh, the PlayStation 3 had a curve. You on top yeah you and couldn't was, put anything on top yeah but you don't you shouldn't put anything on top <laughs> yeah. of your system anyway uh the bottom is completely flat yeah do that yeah. i don't care if the top's curved you shouldn't see you can't see the bottom anyway yeah. or do what you did have the disc drive be the base on one side also here's no problem how are you gonna we we know that there's a little kickstand for the version with the disc and then the disk drive is what kind of it sits on on the yeah. left side. What's going to happen with the disk list? It version? probably has its own special kickstand. Yeah, it's going to have a different kickstand. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm baffled by 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 this. Should also uh, note it goes on to say a variety of PS5 console covers um, in different colors for the new model will be available starting in early 2024 including an all matte black colorway 
and the Deep Earth collection colors, Volcanic Red, Cobalt Blue, and Sterling Silver. Uh, prices for the console covers will start at $55 US dollars. Additional colors will be released over time. That's um, cool. That is cool. They did just announce the Deep Earth collection for the regular PS5. You know, the, the like nice red and like the deep blue. So they just announced that. And now all of a sudden, like, oh, here's a new model of PS5 that those won't work with. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 that's something PlayStation is doing right. The console covers, yeah. even though sometimes they're hard to get your hands on, and but they are like, let's be real. They are expensive. They're, they they're are. a little expensive, but, uh, I think it's a cool way to refresh the console without having to buy a whole new console. Because uh-huh. I mean, you know, the PS, the Spider-Man PS5 comes out and then some people want to get a whole new, like if I was as into PlayStation as I am in, as the Nintendo switch, I might want have wanted to also get the Spider-Man yeah. PS5, but instead I can just get the cover and have the exact same experience. Right. Uh, someone sent me, uh, Chris Max sent me cons- compare sizes, and it's not loading. So, um, is it literally just going to be a 3D render of the new, of the new PlayStation? Maybe. Uh, one thing that they like kind of went unnoticed was that it is it does have now a full terabyte hard drive in it. Oh, yeah, that's probably one of the more important things yes. that we should talk about. Uh, but, but okay. Storage upgrade, great. Yeah. That's great. Should have that. Mm-hmm. $500, same price as the old PS5, but now you get a terabyte. Instead of 850 terabyte, gig- uh, gigabytes, yeah. you shouldn't have... That was weird. Why that, did you do yeah, that? You're, first of all, you're not getting much more. Yeah. Second of all, uh, the OS, I think, takes up like 200 gigs, yeah. so you're already missing out mm-hmm. you basically need uh upgraded storage on a playstation yeah, 5. i bet I, that's a good thing i bought one when i got my playstation uh now is there an m.2 slot that is as accessible uh, i would hope so i don't know if we have any word about that i haven't seen there is a specs list yeah i don't see on the specs list upgradable storage Ooh. <laughs> could you imagine no because like that was a big selling point of the original Mm -hmm. and even like all the ps3 models all the ps4 models let you upgrade the hard drive so true if they're if they don't let you do that here like that that's a massive l that would be huge that would be a big problem yeah uh, I'll also say uh, one of the issues with the original PlayStation 5 is the thermals. Uh, it, it's shaped weirdly, partly because it's got it, it needs to dissipate the heat in some yeah. way. Uh, and they didn't do that good of a job on the original PlayStation 5. I think they slowly iterated it over time, mm-hmm. like silently. Uh, but hopefully this one will fix that. So uh, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. But it's also not that much. It's not... It's slightly smaller, so having better thermals and being smaller is 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 a bit of a W. Yeah, but it's not that much smaller. I'm looking at the chat to see if anybody sees anything about an M.2 drive. I'm I'm now very concerned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, again, I'm very surprised that this is here so soon yeah. i thought at at most we've i thought we were a year, year out yeah yeah uh, or, or like I, I thought maybe early next year because mm-hmm. we're already in october so a lot of like black friday stuff you would have heard about yeah already. and like they just put out the spider-man edition so a lot of people me bought that they just had that deal where you know if you just bought a playstation we'll give you a free game like they're doing all these promotions and stuff for the old model and now all of a sudden they're like hey here's the new model mm-hmm so it just seemed weird that they would go about it like that. Buying the Spider-Man PS5 bundle, you save around $100 compared if you buy all the stuff individually. $100? Something like that. That's a lot. The, What's all the stuff? The, uh, the face plates, the controller, and the game. Oh, but is it the only controller you get? You get one controller? You get one controller, controller, yeah. Okay. I don't think that you could claim that that's 
Because, like, it's not the same as buying a, play, a, a Spider-Man PS5 controller. Yeah. Because it comes with well, a controller. Well, the Spider-Man PS5 system is $100 more than your standard PS5. Right. So that $100 gets you the game, just the Spider-Man face cover, and just the Spider-Man controller. Yeah, but if you buy a regular PS5, you already have a controller. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You also already have white faceplates, but that doesn't mean anything. Those right. are worthless. Having a second controller is actually yes. a bit of a positive. I would like a second controller, but that's a will problem. I got controllers. I yeah. Do you need a second controller? We got controllers. We we, we you even got one to match your Spider Man <laughs> controller. True. That's true. <laughs> I'll I'll go shopping after the show. Yes. I literally have every color. The only color I don't have is black because I gave it to Greg and I regret that because now I have the black faceplate on my uh, PlayStation 5. I, I will say though, I do kind of like the the volcanic red that's coming out. It's all I, I was, but I'll, I'll go shopping in your store later. Uh, PS5 volcanic red? Yeah. It's that Deep Earth collection they showed off. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, uh, and the cobalt blue is also really nice. Yeah. I currently use the cosmic red. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, volcanic red's cool. Yeah. God, I like how vol- different colors. How about <laughs> how about do that? Did they put out the camo one? Because they always do a camo one for uh, the army bros. They did. Okay. Uh, I don't have that one okay. actually. Surprisingly, they they didn't. There's one camo one. Yeah. And I, I do not have that. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not like Xbox where like every two minutes they like fart out another color. Yeah, but they're so good. Yeah. All of them are so they're so <laughs> cool. <laughs> Uh, I did get an article from Charlie Fenn, who, and it says, uh, Sony confirms PS5 Slim will still support expandable storage. Okay. Uh, and the original PlayStation 5 had 825 gigabytes, but only 667 was usable. So we were a little off on the, on the right. Map. But you know, that's still a large chunk that's unusable. It's almost 200 gigs unusable. Yeah. Uh, we were we missed the mark on how big the storage was by 25 gigs. It's actually less than what we thought. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, PS5 Slim continues to support expandable storage. So is it M.2? Do we know that for sure? Uh, f- uh, you can't just throw any M.2. Oh, wait. The option to throw an M.2 SSD to expand the storage on the system is a nice feature, especially when you consider that last month a software update rolled out allowing support for up to 8 terabytes. Holy shit. Uh, as with the launch model, you can't just throw any M.2 in there. Yeah, you should look up a, yeah. a list of uh, supported ones. Most of them just work. Yes. Uh, the biggest problem is whether or not the heat sink that... Some of them have big heat sinks that don't fit. Yeah, that's that's the important one. I know, I think... Um, I forgot who it is, but they make a heat sink just for the PlayStation 5. Oh, okay. Yeah. Most fit just fine. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't worry too much. Yeah. And I mean, if... It's not like there's a big box online retailer that controls half the internet that's doing a big sale the next few days that always actually does have good deals on storage expansion. I'm look I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> I hate the way they do it though because like two when- terabyte HP SSD. I'm putting this I'm putting this in the chat right How now. How much? A uh, hundred. It was. Uh, this is weird. Ninety five dollars. Uh huh. But uh, then you click on it and it says $111. Okay. So uh, Prime Day is weird. Yeah. I also hate though because when you go to the Prime Day deals page, it's not just like storage. They like break it up by company. Mm-hmm. So it's like all the Western digital storage. And then on the next page, all the Samsung storage. And on the next page, all the crucial storage. Here's a PNY one for $80. It's two terabytes. Yeah. Uh, I'm putting affiliate links in the chat. I need to get one of them. I don't know how fast these are. I'm not comparing the actual speed. So the one I got from mine is a silicon power two terabyte. Mm. Um, I'd never heard of them before, um, but it's only ninety dollars, and it fits and it's the right uh, speed. So okay, well, no, the speed will be fine on all of them. I would assume it's the but right, the faster the better. Yeah, it's obviously. uh, you know, it's the PCIe Gen four. So I have um, a gigabyte one in mind. You can watch a video about yeah. it. Uh, okay. I just found this uh, completely unrelated. An Inlad uh, uh, M.2. No, I'm sorry. An Inlad NVMe 
that fits in a Steam Deck or an ROG Ally. The same one that I have in my Steam Deck, except this is two terabytes instead of uh-huh. one terabyte, and it's $170. So having two okay. terabytes yeah. in a Steam Deck, that could be pretty sick. Yeah. And that will fit in a PS5, so. Yeah, you'd have so much more room. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to get one of these for my computer because I think I have a spot for uh, an SSD, like on the motherboard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my computer is really tight. There's a lot in it. Uh, Chris Mack sent me a new link with the comparison of the consoles. Here it is. It's the same thing that we saw <laughs> on the Verge. I guess we'll have to wait until people start getting it in hand to like do proper comparison. Yeah, I got to see it visually. Like, like yeah. this is this is good because I I can tell that it's not that much smaller. But mm-hmm. uh, I need to see it in real life because there's yeah. a there's a it could look smaller than it actually is. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so I'm not uh, that impressed with this uh, refresh of a PlayStation Five. I I would be more impressed if I didn't just get one. Yeah. So like, because I, I I was I always said like I would wait till like the slim revision to get it, mm-hmm. but it looks like there's really aside from size, there's no benefit to this over the old model. The, the price is the same. The price is more actually. You know, it does. It doesn't seem like there's you know a performance. Not that I was expecting a pro model, but like a, an efficiency change or anything like that. So if you have the original model, don't upgrade. And if you're planning on getting a PS5, don't wait for this new one. Just get the current one. I'm a little hesitant to say that because of how uh, many issues the previous model had. I think that a lot of those issues got ironed out throughout the years, like yeah. silently. Uh, but the launch one, I think, has some some issues that I would hope would be ironed out in the new version. Right. I'm not sure that they will be, though. So I, I, I don't know. I can only hope that they're making a, a mid-cycle iteration because of those issues. Yeah. Um, so. And to I, be clear, this is not the PS5 Pro. Oh, this yeah. This is just the PS5 Slim. Yeah, I don't think anybody was expecting that, right? That, You'd be, you'd be surprised. People thought that we people still nobody think we're watching getting, this show no, was expecting because you're a all PlayStation smart, 5 Pro, you're right? All smart, beautiful people. <laughs> no, but no, there were articles saying that there was going to be a pro. Yeah, I, I, that I don't know. I also I genuinely me. think we've moved past the mindset of like a pro, yeah, because they could barely get this one, yeah, working and they could barely use all of the tech that's already in the PlayStation 5. Games can't hit. 4K 120. So yeah. why do you need a pro? It, it it doesn't make any sense. Uh, what's Xbox gonna do? <laughs> well, they have plans for a f- an Xbox Series X refresh, an all digital edition in with 2025, terabytes. supposedly. Is that when they said it was? I think out? I think they said 2025. Well, it looks like it's coming out a lot sooner. And that seemed like a refresh. Uh, it also kind of seemed like a new console. I I think that Xbox is in a weird new area where everything just kind of kind of is going to get morphed together oh xbox is just in a weird area period yeah i don't know what's gonna happen the transition xbox's transition from this generation to the next one is going to be really weird because i yeah. feel like they don't they're not not going to think about generational gaps uh soon games will just stop working on xbox yeah. <laughs> like the current xbox and then move over to the next one Open another box. Oh yeah, we have so many boxes. We have to open. Boxes. We didn't. I did, we didn't open a box. We, we opened a bag. We opened a bag. Uh, let me read notifications here. We got okay. Tiger Zombie. Thanks for the Prime. We got Ethel. Thanks for the forty eight months. Yay for four years. Thank you both for all the wonderful content. Also, I was in Germany and learned that Cool Ranch Doritos there are called Cool American <laughs> because ranch is such an American flavor. That is. That is such a better name. I believe that. Cool, <laughs> cool American. American. <laughs> I'm going to have some cool American. Yeah. Monkey, thank you for the four months. Will Bob do a video? It's hard to see the yeah. word <laughs> Will so close to the word Bob. Do you, will, will Will Bob do a video <laughs> about how to cut your old plates to fit your new PS5? <laughs> That's no. a good idea. <laughs> no, I will not. I'll do that video. Mohawk Chris, thank you for the prime. <laughs> Uh, all right. What's the next news? The next news is Nintendo 
shutting more things down. Okay. Uh, while while PlayStation is adding things, Nintendo is destroying things. Yes. Yeah. You read this. Uh, I will open a box. Okay. Next spring, Nintendo will shut down the online services behind nearly all of its 3DS and Wii U software, affecting multiplayer and other connected features. According to Nintendo, this also includes online cooperative play, internet rankings, and data distribution. News of this early April 2024 shutdown follows the return of online features for the Wii U versions of Mario Kart 8 and Splatoon, which had disappeared between March and August, while Nintendo dealt with a vulnerability related to online play. Uh, one service that will continue to operate for now is the Pokemon Bank, the cloud storage software uh, service that launched in 2013 with Pokemon X and Y, although you may want to transfer that collection over to the new Pokemon Home. Uh, and gaming offline is still possible. Also, this FAQ from Nintendo says that players will be able to download patches and re-download games purchased from the eShop, quote, for the foreseeable future. Eshop sales of Wii U and 3DS games ended in March of this year. There is no specific date listed for the shutdown yet, and Nintendo's FAQ also mentions that if an event occurs that would make it difficult to continue online services for the 3DS and Wii U software, we may have to discontinue the services earlier than planned. Uh, Spot Pass features are also going away, but Nintendo says that Street Pass links between 3DS family systems will continue to work anywhere you can find someone else who has one even after these servers go away. This planned early April 2024 shutdown will occur just over 10 years after the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection service went offline, ending online services for the Wii and DS titles in 2014. So this is the 8-bit do keyboard. Oh. It smells. <laughs> also, the light's on. Oh. The, there's, a, there's a light on. Interesting. So anyway, it, you said that you can... Uh, Spot Pass is still gonna work. You can still like get Spot, your Spot. No, Spot Pass is going away. Street Pass will still work. Oh, that's weird. That Street Pass will work. I I, I think because Street Pass is like system to system, you won't be able to uh, do some of the games. Some right. of the games require internet. Yeah, this is nice and cool. But like just the regular Street Pass that's on your system, like you'll still be able to like walk right. past somebody. Yeah, and, that's like, see their me. Fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. That 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 that's still gonna be able to work. Yeah. What type of switches are in this? They're nice and clicky. How did they know that I wanted clicky ones? I mean, they watch your show. So this is the uh, NES version of the uh, Ape Do keyboard. I was a little skeptical if I was gonna get this or not. Uh, I'm very happy that I did. I I kind of really wanted one. This will look sick on that mouse pad that's yeah. over there that nobody knows that I have. <laughs> um. Oh, that is nice. Is that bigger than a certain other mouse pad? No, it's the same mouse pad. Okay. It's the oh, same it looks bigger. Um, it doesn't say what... Oh, no. PPD keycaps. That's normal. Mechanical switches. Yeah, duh. What oh, wait. Pop a key off. I was going to say, just like, rip can I just key pop off. a key off? Uh, They're white. Okay. They're white. Uh... Okay, so here's some more cool stuff about this. Uh, have you seen the big buttons? Uh, yes. I might main this keyboard. <laughs> so you get the big button. Yeah. And you, it, it, it kind plugs. of, it kind of works like the adaptive, like the Xbox yeah, adaptive controller. Yeah, here's the thing back here. Yeah, show, show uh, the a, a, B, X, and Y. Let's do that. Right here. So A, B, X, and Y. So this just is A and B, but it's it's uh that that's just a trick. Right. Uh, and then it it has its own software, so you can map anything to it. Uh, they have um. I turned it on Bluetooth. How the fuck did that happen? I literally just switched it to Bluetooth, and it said new Bluetooth keyboard found. Oh my god, I didn't know we could do that. Uh, I didn't know my computer was searching all the time. Yeah. Uh, it has little stickers for the big buttons, oh. so you don't forget what's on them. That's cool. But now it says it's one port for A, one port for B, one port for X, one port for Y. And that only has one cable coming out of it. Yeah. So, uh, well, so it, it looks like a headphone cable. Yeah. It's probably stereo. Uh -huh. One for each side. Uh, the software will make it so you could do whatever you want. Got on either it. Of them. Uh, so that's cool. 
I'm interested in this. Uh, yeah. When I do some uh, speed run stuff, I have the ape it do. Uh, I mean, I haven't done this in a while, but I have the ape it do arcade stick, and I have one of the buttons on the arcade stick set as a macro to reset the 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 the, the game, so it resets. Super Mario Brothers, the NES emulator, it yeah. completely resets it, and it resets my stopwatch uh -huh. and all of the timers and stuff. Uh, so I would set that to a button, yeah. So I can use whatever controller I want, and then I just go boom, and it resets everything. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, I like how it has the B and A buttons over here. Oh yeah, right that's there. a nice little touch. Yeah. And uh, what what was it? What did I see that I wanted to point out? I don't remember. Let me see. Let me see. It has volume. It does have volume. That's cool. I do like. I mean, it looks a lot like the Ape It Do uh, arcade stick that I like so much. Uh, the knobs are pretty much exactly the same. Two point four gigahertz dongle with the little adapter in the back. That's extremely yeah. useful. Uh, I'd probably leave it connected though. Does it have a braided cable? I'm a big keyboard guy. Right. I mean, it probably doesn't have one of those fancy coil cables. Does not though. have a fancy coil cable. Disappointed in you, I bit do. I do like the switches, though. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's what I want to ask. If you could swap out yes. the whites for a different switch. They are hot swappable, okay. I believe. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're hot. They look like it. Uh, Cool. I'm gonna, I might plug this in tonight and just start going for there it. There we go. Uh, okay. And then this is cool, too. Uh, all right. So, what were we talking about? Nintendo shutting down uh, the the Wii U stuff. Online services for Wii U and 3DS. So, I thought this happened already. No, they shut down the stores. So, somebody in my chat said, "Are you sad that you're not going to be able to play Mario Maker One anymore?" And I just thought I wasn't able to anyway. <laughs> uh, I I just I didn't know on. this was news that dropped. Apparently, there are still people playing like Splatoon One regularly. Mm -hmm. So this is like a big loss for them. I mean, it's still it's always sad when like a ser a service goes completely offline because that means so much of the system and the games you bought for it like are unusable. Yeah. Now, um, and it's Nintendo, so it's not like they're gonna make this stuff available for people to, you know, do at home. They're not gonna open source it, so that stinks. Uh, yeah, no, they're not. But I mean, people are gonna do something anyway. Also, too, like we had a year to get ready for the the e-shops to close down they're only giving you like six months here and they said like they may shut it down earlier if necessary well let's be real a lot of online services just a lot of online stuff for the 3ds and wii U just don't work anyway yeah so th th there's shutting down the shops was the last important thing like most games aren't functional on there anyway yeah. i don't even wait i'm pretty sure they shut down mario maker already Maybe, but that was just one game. Now it's everything. Yeah, right, right, right. Right? You weren't able to play levels, right? Or upload levels, something like that. I don't know. You're the Mario Maker guy. I'm pretty sure they stopped. I was asked if I cared that I wasn't going to be able to play Mario Maker yeah. 1. And I was like, no, I got to hook up my Wii U to do that yeah. when I can just play it on the Switch. It's basically the same game. Right. So, uh, I unboxed another thing. This is uh, the R35S. I don't remember what this is or who sent it to me. <sighs> I don't remember anything about about this thing. Oh, it looks like an emulator device of some kind. Well, yeah. Yeah. That we, we got that. Looks like a pow kitty, but it doesn't say pow kitty yeah. anymore. So, I, I don't remember why I got that. I'm going to blow my nose. Uh, I think it was like a cheap, like a super cheap something that Taki Uda made a video about. <laughs> Here's another extremely tiny box that I don't know what it is. Mm. You can still play levels, just not upload. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I, I mean, if they disable online, you won't be able to download. Yeah. Levels, or play other people's levels. It is amazing though how like Microsoft said we're closing down the 360 shop. Nintendo's like we're closing down the Wii U 3DS. And when Sony tried to deal with the PS3 and the Vita, everyone's like no. And Sony's <laughs> like okay. What is this? These are key. These are keyboard switches. Okay. Are they switches for your brand new Ape Do keyboard? No, they're not actually. Oh. K Pre Public. 
It doesn't. They, they don't really explain anything. It's just a bo It's just a bag of a bag of <laughs> keyboard switches. Well, okay. They look like jades, but uh, so I, you know, I like I like really click clicky switches. Yeah. These these go in like my fight stick. Ooh, these are really clicky. These are like jades. Yeah. Well, thank you. K pre public. Did I buy these? I don't. I don't know. Whatever. Thanks, man. Uh, all right. What's the next news? Next news. Uh, Activision says its games won't come to Game Pass until next year if the Microsoft deal goes through. With all signs pointing to an imminent successful end for Microsoft's Activision Blizzard acquisition saga, Activision has moved to address the issue of its titles uh, appearing on Game Pass, saying not to expect that to happen until next year if the deal goes through. To date, Activision titles have been notably, noticeably absent from Game Pass, but the assumption has been that that would change once Microsoft's uh, $69 billion bid for the Call of Duty publisher succeeds. And with the deal now anticipated to be finalized this week, uh, assuming the UK Com Competition and Market Authority gives its green light as it's generally expected, uh, questions, around, questions around an Activision presence on Game Pass have shifted to um, when instead of if. Uh, the company has now addressed fan queries on social media, writing, As we continue to work towards regulatory approval of the Microsoft deal, we've been getting some questions about whether our upcoming or recently launched games will appear on Game Pass. Uh, while we do not have plans to put Modern Warfare 3 or Diablo 4 onto Game Pass this year, it continued, once the deal closes, we expect to start working with Xbox to bring our titles to more players around the world, and we anticipate that we would begin adding games to Game Pass sometime in the future of next year. In order to get its Activision Blizzard acquisition over the finish line, Microsoft has agreed to sell the streaming rights for Activision's titles to Ubisoft in the UK. Um, that's after the CMA moved to block the deal in April, highlighting concerns relating to the burgeoning cloud gaming sector and arguing the acquisition could uh, risk stifling competition in the growing market. I was a little interested in this because Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 has been getting some press lately. Mm -hmm. And so has the Activision Blizzard deal. Yeah. So people are naturally interested to see if... Uh, People are going to be able to play the new cool Call of Duty mm -hmm. on other devices or through cloud streaming or yes. whatever. And it seems like no. No, not at They're going to need a little more time to uh, get it working on the cloud stuff. Yeah. Call of Duty is not optimized for anything. No. So they need to optimize it a little bit, uh, get it to work on the cloud stuff. And that's obviously not a priority to them right now. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. I the next one, maybe. I understand Diablo 4 and Modern Warfare 3 not being on Game Pass right away. Um, but, you know, if this deal goes through, we're going to start seeing Activision games on Game Pass, just regular old Game Pass, within a month. Like, you're going to see older Call of Duties there. You're going to see right. Tony Hawk there. You're going to see Crash Bandicoot there. Like, it's going to start happening. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Activision, like the Activision division of Microsoft says, no, our new games won't go on Game Pass day one. Okay. Because they're gonna try and like keep maintain the prestige of their titles, and by that I mean they want to make a lot of money. I could see Game Pass becoming worse. Yeah, uh, we're over, we already saw it with Starfield, and uh, I think Forza did the same thing. Did yeah. they not? Yeah. yeah, where it's not actually day one. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's possible that Activision games just don't come out on Game Pass. Yeah, like for for a bit, which would defeat the purpose. Of Game Pass. It was like, yep. the promise was all first party Microsoft titles will be there day one. Mm -hmm. And already with Starfield, there was some controversy over that. Yeah. And then with the Activision stuff, like, do they get special uh, privileges because they're not technically Xbox Game Studio titles? Mm -hmm. They're like a weird second party, even though they're only published on one system. So uh, I have some things here. Okay. Uh, this is a bunch of 3D printed cases for emulators. Uh, hey, Bob. My name is Randall McGlynn. I have an Etsy store where I have make 3D printed accessories for gaming devices. I wanted to send you a few that I have. My main products at the moment are two-in-one case grips for emulators. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, in the box, I included a case grip for the Retroid Pocket 2S, which I don't have. Uh... Pocket 3 Plus, RG405M, and an articulating case for the RG355XX. The case for the RG355XX isn't a two-in-one, 
It's more meant to be protection. Okay, I, I get it. I understand. Uh, I mean, it's really Garlic OS that enables it. But I really like how the RG35XX allows you to get into and out of a game incredibly fast. Okay. Thank you very much, Randall McGlynn. Epic printing on Etsy. Uh, it's just... They're just grips. That, that are also... <laughs> so, like, uh, you put the system in this way. Yeah. So it protects the screen. Then when you're ready to play, you flip it around. Oh, yeah. I've seen play. those. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of cool. Uh, this one's interesting. This is for the RG35XX, the one that kind of looks like this. Yeah. Uh, so this is, it, it, it's, it, look at this. It's like, it's like a garage door <laughs> and it hooks on, you screw it into the back uh -huh. and you flip it up like that and then you play. Nice. And then when you're done, you go like that. Yeah. My only concern is that this should be felt because this is going to mm. be on the screen, but this is an interesting idea for yeah. a for a screen for a, for a protector i mean cool i feel like i'm ignoring chat now because of opening boxes well maybe chat should be a box uh gm 3pf says give us guitar hero on game pass speaking of which <laughs> Uh, this actually broke right as we were going live, so I just threw it in here. Ahead of the Xbox acquisition, Activision's Bobby Kotick discussed Microsoft, Musk, Elon Musk's Neuralink, why, and hinted at Guitar Hero revival in a leaked interview. Uh, Microsoft is in the process of acquiring Activision Blizzard, uh, known for Diablo, Candy Crush, Wo uh, World of Warcraft, and Call of Duty. Um, the deal, valued at $72 billion now, apparently, um, would give Xbox control over some of the world's biggest franchises. Uh, while facing intense regulatory scrutiny, Microsoft has emphasized the deal is designed around competing with Apple and Google on mobile devices. Sure. Um, the Activision Blizzard deal is expected to close as soon as Friday, uh, pending UK approval. Uh, to that end, Activision CEO and notable idiot Bobby Kotick <laughs> uh, called an all-hands meeting with Activision Blizzard King staff today, hosted by none other than James Corden. I guess what? the the TV host, what the who's fuck? also apparently a a notable idiot. Yeah, people don't like him. Yeah. Um, during the meeting, Kodak reminisced about Activision's journey from independent to being under Vivendi and then to, uh, to become a publicly traded company. Kodak also discussed future tech, name check Guitar Hero, and hinted that the future of Activision Blizzard uh, partnership, what the uh, future of Activision's partnership with Microsoft might look like. Uh, James Corden asked how Kodak and Activision leadership uh, will re uh, retain its culture, which Kodak repeatedly described as magic and special during the discussion. Uh, Kodak emphasizes his belief that Microsoft wants to acquire the company for that magic represented in the 15,000 plus staff within Activision, predicting that Microsoft will seek to maintain it moving forward. Uh, changing gears a bit, Kodak uh, was asked to look ahead to the future of gaming and what that could mean for Activision and Microsoft. Uh, Kodak discussed machine learning and AI, but also emphasized the need for, to hire more writers, more actors, to meet the growing expectations of gamers. He also surprisingly name-checked Elon Musk's brain interfacing Neuralink as a potential way for interacting with video games, which he described as more visceral medium than movies and other entertainment media. We don't. I don't want that. No. I don't want that for video games. I want a controller to play my video games. With. Yes. That's it. That's all I, I mean, I want more ways to play games, <laughs> right. but I don't want things to be taken away right. from the way I currently play games. Yeah. I want more options, not less options. Yes. Uh, also, when asked about uh, retain its culture, he should have said, we're not because we're we're under heavy fire for all the sexual harassment and discriminatory <laughs> practices uh, we've been doing over the years we've been we've been actively doing yes. yes we've been actively doing the sexual harassment okay uh machine uh future tech machine learning and guitar hero kodak also discussed technological innovations mentioning how mobile devices took gaming from from a fairly expensive middle class pursuit in developed nations in the early days to a global phenomenon Phil Spencer, that Xbox lead, often talks about Microsoft's goal to reach all of the world's 2 billion gamers, and mobile devices will naturally uh, form a part of that strategy. However, Kodak was also interested in discussing future tech, such as Neuralink, as well as VR. Uh, let me just skip to the Guitar Hero stuff. I am currently holding a TomTalk case okay. that I have. I don't know what 
the difference is. I've actively used this. This is uh, the Steam Deck travel bag. I, okay. I, what's different? Is this, I don't remember this strap. Is it a different color? Or? No, it's the exact same color. Right. Maybe it's like a 2.0 version? Yeah. Oh, no, I see. Okay, there's like a big hard thing in the middle. I don't like that. That's not as good. Yeah. Because the reason why I, I use it all the time, I use it, uh, I actually use it for the ROG Ally. Right. Uh, but I often don't put anything inside of it because it's just a nice little sling bag. Yeah. Uh, but this now has this hard thing in the middle to uh, protect the Steam Deck, mm -hmm. I guess. But uh, can you take that out? Oh, you can. It's Velcro. There you go. All right, now it's the same now thing. Now it's the same thing. Yeah. And and you know what? Well, actually, no. Uh, the other one has like a spacer. It has like, oh, a, yeah. like a foam... And like a soft foam. That thing. probably replaced the spacer because people probably wanted like a harder case inside. Yeah. Yeah. There uh, you go. Okay. That's cool, I guess. I don't know which one I would like better. But thank you. You want a friggin' sling bag? Sure. <laughs> I got a million of these. Now. Nice. Uh, Kodak also uh, looked ahead to the next 10 years of gaming, reminiscing about transformative titles from Activision's back catalog, like Pitfall, River Raids, and Kaboom. Um, Kodak also name-checked Guitar Hero, hinting that it's currently on a path to a revival. The reemergence of Guitar Hero and other things would not be possible without the different types of resources. And so, you know, just the endless possibilities of the future are that just incredibly exciting. Kodak also signed off by presumably ref uh, referencing machine learning graphics technology like DLSS that enable lower power devices to access more immersive visuals, typically associated with higher end gaming PCs and more expensive laptops. The accessibility that it's uh, going to come from less and less expensive processing um, that will be more widely available and inexpensively available is going to create more and more opportunities for the amazingly talented people that we have here. We were expecting a little bit of a revival from Guitar Hero. Yes and no. I, cause they did Guitar Hero Live a few years back mm -hmm. and that didn't really like move the needle at all. And I, you know, I just assumed that that was it for Guitar Hero, like, period. Rock Band is still apparently trucking along. Like, that's just, like, doing its own How? thing. I don't know. I haven't but, like, seen anything Harmonic that. still supports it. Okay. Well, they're just, are they releasing songs? Yeah. Okay. So, good on them, but, like... I, I think it makes sense for uh, Rhythm Games to, to, to come back. I, rhythm Games are big. They're just not in the same way they were... Uh, right. Uh, during the Guitar Hero generation. Yeah. Guitar Hero was like otherworldly, but there's yeah. still a big uh, market for rhythm games. It's just Guitar Hero kind of stopped innovating. They just kind of right. ran, they into, ran the into the ground. Right, they ran into the ground, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if part of this... Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is Xbox being like, we want Guitar Hero, Guitar Hero to do something. Yeah. So that makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, this case that I have in my hand is a uh, Tom Talk Steam Deck case. Wow, Ooh. look at that! And this one I'm not gonna open. Uh, this is uh like a grip case. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah. I have uh the Satisfy one. This the D brand one is bad. Really? Uh, because it, it the dock can't even fit in it. Mm -hmm. This looks like it does. Uh, at least the dock can mount to the top, so that's right. good. Uh, and then somebody in the chat said earlier uh did you guys talk about the d brand issue with the ps5 slim no no i don't i didn't know that what is issue. the issue is the issue that they didn't know was happening and they they didn't yeah they, they don't, I have don't know dark plates uh, available um okay what else do i have here oh this is kind of a i remember this one remember genki yeah they this? have a Kickstarter going on, I think. For what? A revised version of the um, the the of this that yes, that might actually be what they're kickstarting. There you go. Oh. They said thanks for the Shadowcast shout out. That's on, what it's called. Shadow. On oh, that's different. Yeah, Th that's, that's not, not what that is. That's what this is. Yes, yes, that's this is what they're kickstarting. Uh, thanks for the Shadowcast shout out on X. 
They mean Twitter. Yes. Uh, we thought you might like to check out our new lineup. Please ignore any typos on the placeholder packaging. We were <laughs> in a rush to get samples out, and the final packaging will look different. Hope you enjoy the Alpine collection. So uh, Genki makes uh, a bunch of stuff. They they, add, they make a couple of Nintendo Switch accessories. Yeah. Uh, the most notable one is a dock. Uh, I don't like third party docs. Right. Um, but they also make the Shadow Cast, which is a capture card. Yes. This is uh, the, uh, am I allowed to open these? Yeah. All right. I'm they, trying to pull up the Kickstarter. They original they, they made the Genki Shadow Cast and I made a video on it in like twenty eighteen and I shit all over it because yeah. I, I I thought it was a little dumb. Uh because it doesn't have a pass through. Right. Uh you plug it straight into the computer and you play on the computer, but there's always gonna be a little bit of input lag when you do that. Uh, so here, I'll give you your yeah. own uh, camera. There's always going to be a little input lag when you do that. Uh, but since that video, I've been using the shadow cast as a capture device for cameras. Yes. And it's actually pretty good for that. Yeah. It's, it's not the most high resolution. Yeah. Also people, all the cables are in here. A lot of people were telling me it's just a cheap capture card with ganky slapped on it yeah which is i i don't it's care fine. it works yeah. so i and they have their own software what it's whatever usb c cable hdmi cable it's the only capture card that i have that just works when you turn the computer on right. all these other ones you see i'm unplugging them and plugging back then yeah i would love for them to all just be ganky shadow well now cast. you have the Shadowcast pro to use so this uh is pass through it has pass through yes which is what the first one was missing. Mm -hmm. This is a weird looking guy. So what's so special about this? Uh, let's see. Shadowcast 2 Pro is our fastest and most powerful USB video capture device developed for the latest consoles and beyond. Play, record, and stream high fidelity content for audiences across all platforms without compromises. This design is for pro gamers, influencers, and videographers who want to take their current videos to the next level. Uh, while many other high-tier capture cards uh, like to promote 4K60 support, the truth is they only support 4K60 input. The Shadowcast 2 Pro sits in a league of its own supporting 4K60 input and output. This means you can not only play no. in 4K60, but also record and stream in full 4K at 60 frames per second. No. Just no. <laughs> they do. Uh, so many other capture cards support output. You didn't support any <laughs> output in your last shadow cast. <laughs> Nobody is supporting 120 hertz output. Nobody supports that. There's one capture device that supports that right now. I think because I think the one it's because the one most people get is like the Elgato, and isn't that like not 4K 60? It is. It is. They all are now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The one I have over there, it is. It All straight. Right. I've had it for years. Actually, two of the. I had one. I have one that's in the computer that I gave you. Yes. Four K sixty out. Okay. Uh, actually, no. Yes. No. Maybe. No. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about that one. But this one is four K sixty out. The one that I have now. Right. Now I gotta do math. But uh, do, do we know how much this is? They, uh, they also sent the Genki Shadowcast 2. Yes. So that's the Pro. This is the 2. Yeah. And then this right here is the uh, the Covert Dock. Right. For the uh, Switch, Steam Deck, ROG Ally, MacBook, iPad Pro, iPhone, and Android. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It works for all that stuff. Uh, Wood actually wanted one of those. So maybe I'll just give that to yeah. you. Uh, like I said, it's current, these are currently available on Kickstarter right now. The Shadowcast 2 is $40. Which is twenty two percent off its um, retail price. That's pretty good. This the uh, covert dock is fifty dollars instead of the retail price of sixty, and the, uh, Shadowcast Pro is one hundred and thirty right now instead of one hundred and sixty. So what does this do? Uh, does this do? What so is so the that's, pre the, that's the Shadowcast two. The previous Shadowcast only did a hundred. It only did 1080 at 30 frames per second, right. which is fine for me because I do 24 frames per second when I stream in the other right. room. Uh, this one, it's USB 3.2. Uh, it has true stereo sound, and it's uh, 1080 60. Okay. Yeah. So a slight bump. Yes. Uh, 
another thing another problem with capture cards is they rarely support 24 frames per second mm -hmm. uh which i'm pretty sure the genkis do because it looks pretty smooth on there right uh 4k 60 mark one specs that's what i had inside the computer that i gave right. you I'm pretty sure. Oh wait, it's called 4K 60. Oh, okay, well we're we're talking about output. Right. That's the important thing. I mean, it captures 4K 60. I'm looking at the Elgato HD 60X. That says it has 4K 60 pass through and 1080p 60 recording. That's a small little shit. Guy. That's a box. That's yeah. that's basically the Elgato equivalent of that. Okay. Well. See, I have the 4K 60S Plus. Right. That is a box also. And that does 4K 60 pass through. And I've had that for a while. Right. So. So, yeah, I don't know what uh, my old capture card, if it did pass through. But it was HDMI 2.0, so it has to be. Right. All right, so the HD 60X will capture gameplay in 4K 30 or 1080p 60. Okay. Yeah. So the Genki still... So it's probably not going to pass through. Right. So Genki is still claiming that they can do 4K 60. Do we have a price? Yeah, I said it was 100... Right now it's on Kickstarter for 130. That's pretty cheap. Yeah. Uh, it retails for 160. But if, you know, if you get the... That's that's honestly not bad. They have a bundle for all three for two hundred dollars. All three, what the this, that, and that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they're they're doing a white. They're doing a white yeah. thing now. What I'm trying to figure out is that it comes with the international adapters, and I can't get this off. Oh, let me see. I want to see how it would work. I should probably read the directions, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm. I mean, it's got to just slide off, right? Yeah. We're gonna break this thing. Because what if I want to go to France? I actually just got an international, uh, 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 like, hub thing. Oh, yeah. Because I was going to set this up before you got here because I, I, I could have used you. <laughs> um, I got the Famicom. Yes. And uh, it wasn't working. Okay. And I wasn't sure if it was a power issue or a video issue or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the issue is that it is a hundred volts, no, hundred hundred ten volts instead of hundred twenty volts, right? Because it's Japanese. Yeah. And I think you need a step down converter. Interesting. So I got a thing that might be a step down converter. Okay. I'm not sure. See, I always just thought that it would work. <laughs> yeah, I thought it would just work because you have more power than yeah. you need, but uh, I don't think so. I mean, I guess cause, like it's a cheap. You know, it's a cheaper product, so they probably didn't have, like, the right capacitors and regulators in there. So, like, if you put more power in, it will explode. Yeah. But no, I, yeah. I've hooked up a Japanese, a, a Super Famicom to, like, an American outlet, and that was fine. Okay. Yeah. Modern devices, yes. Old devices, no. So you don't need step down for old devices? Is that what you're saying? Or you do need step down for old devices? Sound like I said you do need. I thought it. it had a DC input as long as you have the appropriate voltage and proper polarity on the adapter tip. It should work. Okay. Well, I have the adapter that came with the Famicom, so. Bob, does Shoutcast 2 have the same overheating problems as the original? Shadowcast has... My Shadowcast overheats a lot. After an hour of use on Streamlabs, I have never had mine overheat. I only stream. I only use. It, I mean, I use it at 1080p, 24 frames a second, so that's mm -hmm. pretty much its cap. Uh, I've left it on for a whole day, and, and nothing's ever had. I've never had any problems with it. I think it's nine volt DC negative tip, same as the original Sega Genesis Model One. I think the tip is compatible too. I did hear that it is the same as the Sega Genesis Model One, but we only have a Model Two. Correct. So can't try that. Um, it could also just be a video problem that I have. Yeah. I got a uh, a different video cable uh, that might work. 
apparently just the international adapters just slide on according to this gif slide on the regular yeah. oh it slides right on the yeah the american outlet yeah so this is uk and it just slides like that okay that's cool i'll never use those yep because even if i was in another country i would have a converter right like i'm not i don't need all that but i guess like if you live in another country it's yeah. nice to have that that that's why they do that uh sneaky sandals thanks for the three months hey guys i got to play super mario wonder last weekend at pax australia oh my god i think you'll i think you'll love it super refreshing for the franchise oh my god that's cool yeah i do think it sounds like fun uh and i would like to play it, it eventually but like we talked about last week a lot of games coming out this month i didn't realize assassin's creed's already out yeah people are assassin's playing it already. already i think sonic superstar comes out next week uh or this week rather it's at target now underscore says i can go to target and play super mario wonder is that what you're saying why am i here yeah uh yeah but i've already committed to spider-man i gotta go to target uh x gamer thank you for the three months three months already man yeah dude yeah thank you uh and mohawk chris thanks for the subscription which target on long island is gonna have the demo I'll be honest, the one by me sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. We we have so many target options. We do. It's like we're we're spoiled for targets, and I hate most of them. <laughs> Cuz they always like they never have like what I'm looking for. Their action figure section is atrocious. Like just straight up atrocious. Yeah. And like in terms like they have games, but like the demo kiosk I think is like 2 years old at this point. Come so. hang in Huntington. I mean, okay. Do they have the demo there? I I've, will go there to play the demo. I haven't been there in a while. Wait, but... He says Huntington. Okay. Do they actually have it there? I will go tomorrow. <laughs> I will fucking go Maybe tomorrow. Else... They have it. All right. See you All tomorrow. Right. Meet up at the... <laughs> I don't know if I'm actually going to go tomorrow, yeah. but I I will go sometime this week to play it. Um. Anyway. We have a show to run. Yes. What's the next thing we got? The Miu oh, Mini. Let me talk about this real quick. Okay. Why don't you open something here? Ooh. Uh, here's two boxes from Glorious. Glorious. Make sure they're not embargoed. All right. Can I have the knife? Yes. Glorious. You know what? Maybe oh, I should I make sure in. they're not embargoed. I won't give in until I'm victorious. You sh last time they put a post-it note in there that okay, said I'll, that it was embargoed. I will look for the post-it note. I'm going to just look it up on here, though, before that, just in case. All right. Uh, September 22nd. October 17th. Embargoed it. Yep, October 17th. Go, so. oh, oh, go, go away. <laughs> come come back in in, yeah. in a week, right? <laughs> yes, a week. It is, exa it is exactly a week. So next week, next we will week. unbox right. the glory stuff. They have sent me so many mice. Do you need any mice? Got so many mice. Are they Bluetooth or 2.4 gig? Whatever you want. I'll take a look. <laughs> Whatever. Well, next week. You next might, week. Okay. You know, have some crazy gaming mice. Um, I also have some in the other room too. Uh, all right. Me, you, mini flip. Okay. Uh, I don't have an article about this, but we we talked about we talked about the rumor of this maybe potentially happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, but here it is. It, it's, it's actually been announced. Uh, we hope that the Miu Flip model will be launched in December. Also, the other model, 282, will be launched in November. I don't know what that is. I don't know what the 282 model is. But here it is, Miu Flip. It is the Miu Mini, but this time it's got a... It's an uh, SP. Game Boy Advance SP yeah. style. Uh, people are really loving those little nubs for thumbsticks you got at the bottom. <sighs> those nubs are definitely like don't use this but if you have to here you go and a lot of people are talking about the colors mm -hmm. i don't think that's the real colors i think this is a printing mock-up or, or, or like a manufacturing i can see that yeah uh so like they, they it's just to show you the different pieces that have to be yeah. manufactured um i don't really care about the thumbsticks because this thing probably won't be capable of anything that's going to take advantage of the thumbsticks. 
The only thing I think is probably PlayStation One. Yeah. And not many games supported it anyway. Yeah. Um, they're using Pokemon in the uh, picture. I'm not sure Very if bold. Miu <laughs> Mini stock alerts is official. They're the ones who posted about it. Right. Uh, so the picture, uh, something about this screams like unofficial. Yeah. But uh, I'd imagine it's the exact same thing as the Miu Mini Plus, just that it it flips. It has, yeah. it has a fold. Uh, I mean, I'm excited to get more Miu action. I like the Miu products, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I was a little burned by the flip version of the Retroid because the hinge was horrible. So, like, just because it could flip and the screen can be covered and you don't need, like, a screen protector or anything yeah. doesn't mean that this is going to be good because the hinge could be Wasn't shit. Wasn't that one also, it was wider? It wasn't, like, it's SP style? It yeah, was it was like wide. Style. It was, it was yeah. pretty big, yeah. So, uh, I'm a little hesitant about this. It's got to yeah. be manufactured pretty good. Uh, next news... Analog announcement. What do you yeah. think they're doing? It's it's got to be a pocket something or other. No. Yeah. I don't think so. What do you think it is? I think it's gonna be a stupid uh, just like a, just like a, an FPGA console they haven't done yet. They've done NES, SNES, Genesis. Um, they have the. Turbo Graphics yep. one that still hasn't come out yet, or I don't even think you can pre-order it yet. Oh, it could be that. Could be. I'm trying to think because the color of it, of the United, it's like an orange. Oh, it's like a light orange. I'm trying to figure out what that could be. Hopefully, it's not just a color for the analog pocket because we've what, already gotten so many. That's of those. what I think. It's like a special Halloween edition of the analog pocket. <laughs> Uh, I'm seeing DS, which would be insane. That would be insane. That would be insane. Yeah. N64. N64 is possible. That would be wild. That would be... I don't yeah. think it's... I want to temper some expectations here. I think that's going to be something like a Turbo Graphics yeah. or something that like... Or a Sega Saturn, something mm -hmm. that not a lot of people are going to care too much about. Um, Yeah, what's with the yellow? I didn't realize that that... Yeah, I'm trying to think. Now we have to decode it from that yeah like i can't think of a system where like yellow was prominent in their you know artwork you know yeah i mean n64 donkey kong but like not but, like, really. if you're gonna do the n64 like that was like the nintendo logo was multicolored and the system was black the controller was gray and this is like an all like it's not even a bright yellow it's like yeah it, it reminds me of like the Halloween movies, like that shade of like orangey yellow that mm -hmm. they use. I don't know. But I, but again, I think it, I, I wouldn't expect a handheld. I would expect something, hope something else. Yeah. Uh, people were saying a flip. That would be a little stupid. Yeah. Uh, okay. What, what other news do we have? Uh, Rockstar at 60 frames per second to uh, Red Dead Redemption 1 on PS5. That was quick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, patch 1.03, which weighs in at just a, a few hundred megabytes, adds 60 frames per second toggle to Red Dead Redemption on PS5. The port launched on PS4 and Switch in August uh, and is available on PS5 via backwards compatibility. At launch, Red Dead Redemption ran at 30 frames per second across uh, PS4, PS5, and Switch, disappointing many fans of the 2010 Epic. Um, here are the uh, patch notes for 1.03 on PS5. Added the option to enable 60 frames per second when playing on PS5 via backwards compatibility. Added an option to enable subtitles upon first booting the game and general bug fixes and improvements. That's good. I wasn't expecting any updates for Red Dead Redemption so soon. We're yeah. kind of shitting on the port. Everybody was. Yeah. This, so. this, one of two things happened. Either... The fact that they got it out so quickly either means that A, they always planned to do this and it was just like bad timing. You know, everyone was shitting on it and they like they couldn't say anything about the patch. Or two, they said, we need to fix this now. Fix this now. I, I so, think... Uh, I'm leaning towards the former. I think they might have gotten a little bullied into it. I think that yeah. they were going to do it anyway. I think they were going to fix it anyway, but they got bullied into doing it quickly. Yeah. So this what I have in my hands here. That's big boy. It's and it's heavy. It looks heavy. This is Satisfy's new controller. 
the, oh, the glyph. Oh, I've seen that. I yeah. think I'm the only person with this. Oh. And they want it back already. <laughs> <laughs> they, they included a packing slip. <laughs> um, I kind of don't know if I want to open it. I mean, I'll open it. Ooh. Oh, wait. I Are those faceplates? Yeah. I can't show this. Okay. <laughs> but I can show this other faceplate. Okay. Uh, did, okay. All right. So yeah, I'm gonna. I oh oh, oh okay. They oh. put this one on. This one I can show. Yeah, this looks cool. Hey, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, they included a second faceplate that is right. That. Okay, <laughs> the one you yeah. So that's cool. So this is heavy and nice. Here, feel it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Jesus. This is their, a Kickstarter going on right yeah, now. Yeah, I saw the Kickstarter for it. They also in, uh, gave me uh, caps. Oh, that sounds like a. That sounds like PBT. Yeah. They gave me caps that I can use to cover uh, uh, some of the buttons. Right. They're okay. still kind of developing this thing. It's a uh, gray. Oh, the switches. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what type of switches are in there. I might. Well, I don't get to keep this, so I'm not gonna put my own switches in there. Yeah. But. This is the all button layout, and yeah. uh, you can customize it to. Uh... So there's, it's a little confusing, the the way that it is. There's four different layouts that you can do, mm -hmm. but also they have little caps that you can put in. So you can just use this layout, and then put the caps in so you can have the buttons wherever you want. Right. Them. So this is the whole shebang right here. So I will probably remove a lot of these buttons. Um, I think they also gave me the layouts that, like, I might just use the Smash Brothers layout. Like, I don't need all of this. But yeah. it is, I kind of wanted the all button because I wanted to see what I can do with it. But I'm, I'd imagine that looking at this probably looks really bizarre because there's so many buttons yeah. on here. So it would be and nice. And they're all unlabeled, too. Yeah, it would be nice to take some out so you, uh... like, when I look at this, when I look at this, my brain is deleting these and these yeah. and the, like if you if you just look at these eight right here yeah these eight right here that's just a fight stick yeah it's just a normal fight stick and then you have up down left right up down left right normal fight stick all these other buttons fun in games yeah <laughs> you know so this actually this feels really nice it's the PBT keycaps. I haven't felt those on a uh, on a fight stick before, mm -hmm. so that's really nice. Uh, okay, I will try this out probably tomorrow. Yeah. So this is really cool. Yeah, and then I'll have to immediately send it back. <laughs> I'm looking at their Kickstarter now. This there's four different layouts. There's a FGC. That's fighting game community. Okay. There's a split FGC. Which is like, you have keys on this side, keys on that side. Mm -hmm. There's full, which is what you showed off. And then there's a platform fighter. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what that could be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here it is. I have it on screen right yeah. now. Uh, there's the different layouts. Oh, it, the, uh, the included cables are USB-C to USB-A and USB-C to GameCube. And then there's a retro pack where you can get uh, SNES, NES, and N64 adapters. That's pretty cool. And also there's another uh, add-on where you can get... Oh, it's a third-party purchase for PlayStation and Xbox. Uh, third-party purchase for PlayStation and Xbox. I guess they're not making it. Somebody else is making it. But you can, uh, buy, okay. you can buy the adapter for it. Kevin got to keep his... What? What? Kevin! Kevin Kenson? I'll be damned if Kevin Kenson gets to keep his... <laughs> um... So yeah, this is still kind of in development. Uh, yeah. They're still doing the Kickstarter and they're still working out some things. So uh, I don't know the purchasing situation because right now, as it's uh, at least when the Kickstarter launched, you kind of had to pick the layout you wanted. Yeah, it's uh, the kick. Uh, each layout is two hundred sixty dollars. Well, no, no, that's well, the whole thing. And then you it, can add, see that it's very confusing. The whole thing is that much. And then you can add a layout for a couple bucks more. Cause, all right, because it says uh, Glyph uh, FGC set two hundred sixty dollars. 
um split fg fgc 260 platform fighter 260 full set 260 yeah that's one of the issues they have with the kickstarter yeah uh is that you can if you want the platform fighter one you click on that one and then you can add another layout for like 35 bucks or something like super cheap then there's the elite bundle which is 360 not sh- uh, that comes with all four layouts yeah and plus some other stuff yeah i think like the case or something okay see like personally i would want the one that comes with all of the buttons right the full set for 259 mm-hmm. and then i'll just put i'll just remove the buttons i don't want and then put the cap there mm-hmm. but they didn't really market it as a way that you could do that right you know uh, that just seems like the easiest way yeah. way to go about it oh so this is a cool like customizable controller for people who don't want to build their own you yeah know, who don't want to build their own from the ground up anyway uh that's the glyph i'll play around with it more tomorrow uh i don't know exactly what i'm gonna play i'll just fuck around with it yeah uh all right let's plow through the rest of the news all right uh, that's all the boxes we had to open yes all the boxes we we had to open for tonight no more no more boxes no more boxes no more boxes some chips though okay uh redfall also got its performance mode yay uh update two in uh block arcane studios detailed everything uh for update two in a blog post on its website. In addition to performance mode, the update adds things like stealth takedowns, more enemies in the open world, and some changes to controller settings, improvements to screen narration, and more. It seems like a pretty substantial patch. Uh, the big thing when it launched was like it didn't launch. One of the big things was that it didn't launch with uh, 60 frames per second, and now it has 60 frames per second. I did see it had a huge boost in uh, the player base. That's good. It went from zero point three percent or something yeah to one (laughs) percent okay of what it launched i think i don't know it was like a very small bump but it still had a bump i mean the fact that they did put out the performance mode and that they're working on it does mean like they believe in it and they want to try and make it a worthwhile experience maybe it can be maybe they can turn it around like you know that seems to be a thing games have been turning around i booted up cyberpunk the other day i didn't get very like i didn't like actually play it but i booted it up on my series x now and like i'm shocked by it it looks incredible like it ran perfectly fine like it was like a completely different game than when it launched yeah yeah so like had they just waited the four years i've seen videos of it and yeah. it looks like a completely it looks different game. incredible yeah. yeah i definitely think like if i ever have time again i think i want to start that game over it's it's a it's a in error in direction like yeah or uh, it's a management issue yeah whether it no, 100%, be yeah. whether it be the publisher forcing them to to put the game out when mm-hmm. i when i like as soon as possible or uh some communication issues where they're not getting things they're not giving the team enough resources to get things done on time yeah um and i heard that cyberpunk had a lot of like a management that just wasn't checked in at all until the very last yeah no they they were like they were features were not anywhere near being worked on until like the last year or something so you know cyberpunk was very poorly managed until yeah last minute so that's when i see a game come out in like a broken state that's what it is yeah those chips not bad you gotta have a couple yeah you gotta like yeah have a decent amount to get any flavor at all Mm mm-hmm Still don't know if it's Italian meat flavored. No, I wouldn't say so. Tastes like puff pastry. Yeah. Tomato and olive oil. Not not even that much tomato though. I mean that's that's a Italian sauce, but it's not red meat sauce. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the red meat is is what's something's off about the yeah. red meat. But I, you know what? I don't know if I would want a chip to taste like meat. You know, bacon flavored chips are usually pretty good. These almost taste like what I would imagine the beef Wellington chips yeah. taste like. Anyway, Canceled Hyenas was Sega's biggest budget game ever. Yes. Uh, okay. New alleged details on the development of Sega and Creative Assembly's canceled live service shooter Hyenas has been published, including claims that Sega canceled it, uh, that it was Sega's biggest budget game ever before the company pulled the plug. The Japanese publisher announced last week it was canceling the multiplayer shooter and some unannounced titles under development in Europe following the last six years of development on the project. Creative Assembly, the developers of the title, have suggested the game was canceled due to ambitious plans and high competition in the multiplayer shooter space. 
However, a new video published by Total War YouTuber uh, Voland, uh, corroborated by VGC's own sources, features claims from anonymous developers that lack of direction, disruptive engine changes, and overtly overly cautious design contributed to the downfall. Uh, one anonymous developer wrote, uh, what went wrong? Total lack of direction. Many of the leaders, uh, leadership asleep at the wheel, but they never seem to lose their jobs. The engine change uh, partway through the process attempt, <laughs> attempted uh, to break into a saturated market, not com- uh, committing to do anything adventurous with the game. We were just talking about... Uh, f- That's a hyena, yes. <laughs> I just Googled hyenas thinking the game was going to come <laughs> We were just talking about games like shipping in poor states because of bad management. And yes. here they are they gen- genuinely talking about it. I'm trying to jog my memory about this game. I am i don't think it was ever announced. No, I vaguely remember it from... Well, here's a from a YouTube channel, Hyenas, from a month ago. Okay. I might be thinking of it... There was a game that looked like Payday. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Payday 3. This is before Payday 3 was yeah. actually a thing. Uh, I was like, oh, Payday 3. And then it wasn't Payday 3 yeah. at all. No, this is a, this is a sci-fi shooter. Right. But yeah. somebody somebody on Twitter said nobody wanted Payday in zero gravity. Yeah. But yeah, is this even Payday? No, this no. looks like an, actual, like an arena shooter. Yeah. Uh, Hyenas, or Project Keaton, as it was known, was greenlit after the critical success... Uh, but commercial disappointment, what, of Alien Isolation, follow, uh, following which the Creative Assembly console team uh, delivered the work-for-hire project Halo Wars 2, which also claimed to have sold modestly. I didn't know Alien Isolation sold poorly. That game was like the talk of the town when the came Yeah, everybody out. loved that game. Yeah. So people, th- these companies got way too high expectations. They really do. That game, everybody loved that game. Yeah, everybody loved that game, and as far as I knew, like, it's... They, there was no there was no place where it was written that Alien Isolation underperformed. Yeah, I've never heard that before yeah. in my life. This game looks like it sucks. I, I don't <laughs> I don't know what anybody's expecting. So I I mean Sega doesn't have a shooter. No. So Oh oh, oh, oh Sonic. Sonic Sonic was on screen. This is why people thought it was payday. Yeah. Because you have a guy in a Nixon mask. <gasps> you can be Sonic. You get a little Sonic outfit. So cool. Yeah, I don't I I don't I don't really get it. There's too there's too many shooters that aren't doing anything different. I guess yeah. the different thing here is the zero gravity, but I don't know how much that's gonna The game was a PvPVE uh shooter, player versus player versus environment, with support for up to fifteen players in a teams of three. The goal of players was to break into vaults spread across the map battling ai enemies as well as other player teams looting merch and escaping the ship alive uh it was inspired by destiny escape from tarkov and PUBG. that's like every type of shooter yeah you just named you just named them that all. definitely sounds like sega saying like hey make a PUBG." yeah mate we want a game that we want a shooter that people are gonna play, yeah. and only that one game yeah. for the rest of time. Uh, and you know what? Like, I think that there is room for Sega to do something like that because right. uh, they are a Japanese company, yeah. And there's not a lot of Japanese companies making shooters. That's usually an American company, right? Thing. But I feel like if I feel like there's different ways, like. The Yakuza franchise. They can do something with the Yakuza franchise. Yeah. If they want a big multiplayer game. Or bring back Fantasy Star Online. Yeah. So. Yeah, this ain't it, Chief. You gotta, you gotta do something different. Yeah. You can't just take PUBG and make a make it Sega in version. Make it space. Put Sonic in it. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Unity CEO steps down. Boo-hoo. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is because... Because he sucks. Because he did a dumb thing and everybody uh, hated him. Unity has announced that John Riccatello is stepping down as president, CEO, chairman, and board member effective immediately. Former EA boss John Riccatello joined the engine maker uh, in 2013 and has led the company since the following year. His departure comes a weeks after the company sparked a backlash from the development community by announcing controversial monetization plans for its popular engine, which it partially walked back following the outcry. Former IBM president James Whitehurst has been appointed as Unity's interim CEO and president, while uh, Rol- 
Roloff uh, Batha, lead independent director of Unity Board, has been named new chairman. Last month, Unity announced plans to change developer to charge developers every time a game that uses its engine was installed. Starting in January 2024, the proposed Unity runtime fee would apply to games that met a minimum revenue threshold and uh, have passed a minimum lifetime install count. The move was widely criticized by developers, some of whom began boycotting Unity by switching off its ad products uh, and the company later revised its plans. Unity said it will no longer be charging per install fees for those using Unity Personal or Plus plans and that fees would no longer apply to existing games. That article said a week after uh, that news came? No, it comes weeks after. Oh, weeks after. Okay, yeah. I heard one week and I was like, no, that was a while ago. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, he fucking, I mean, I don't want to blame one guy. I'm sure it was a bunch of people at Unity that came up with this dumb idea. No, you can blame him. This is the same guy who said in a, in a call when he was uh, the head of EA, if I can find a way to monetize reloading in a game, I will. Reloading. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you know, the could you, you imagine all the time a microtransaction? <laughs> Every time you pull, you're playing Battlefield and you need to reload. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, he like you want to see things like this when a company does something bad. You know, it's not the workers who get laid off; it's the guy in charge. Yeah, no, th th that's a very poor decision. That I'm sure that a lot of people at unity were like no that's a bad idea and he's like i don't care i'm the boss i'm gonna yeah. make the dumb decision it'd be amazing if that happened at twitter that would <laughs> well he's not the president and ceo anymore he's just the owner i don't know i don't understand i watched an interview with the actual uh I, president the, the verge one that's in my save later i don't i didn't watch the whole thing because yeah. it was very hard but uh i don't know if it was the verge but it, it's a woman talking yeah, to yeah. I think at, was, at, I, like a conference yeah i think that was the verge okay yeah. Uh, cause they ask, they're like, so Twitter wants to start, uh, Elon says that you guys are going to start charging for just regular use on, on, on Twitter. Uh, yeah. uh, did you know about this? And yeah. she's like, no, <laughs> she walks, she doesn't answer the question. She walks around yeah. every question she gets asked. She walks around it. Yeah. So I don't know. What's the last dumb thing they did? The last dumb thing Twitter did was make it so there's no headlines and article titles. Well, no, it was that. And then it was, uh, you can now set your tweets to only see responses from verified accounts yeah you can only allow verified yeah. people to, to respond i want the opposite of that <laughs> yeah that'd be cool if i can have the opposite. most verified accounts now are dumb yeah are the worst they're it's dumb horrible it, it's slowly uh folding in on itself yeah there was another thing that happened recently that i was like well this is the end of the fucking website <laughs> <laughs> was it elon trying to stream games and like the the stream was bad no that was I, I always caught that after it was already up. yeah uh he would stream for like 45 minutes yeah he was trying to stream diablo 3 and it was diablo 4 sorry and it was not good yeah uh well anyway uh where where are we now uh, uh spider-man 2 adidas shoes wow yeah look at that uh, the new collection not a depicts. Fan. Those are Yeezys, are they? It's got the Yeezy like like sole. Well, they they canned his ass because he's a bigot. Yeah, so they so, just took it, and now they gave it to Spider Man. Now they gave it to Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does, would. Does this have connotations now? Yeah, everybody likes Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I think I would like these shoes better if it was just the Spider-Man colors. I think the fact that they have to keep throwing the Venom symbiote on everything. Like, I get that's a major part of the game, but, like, it negatively affects the visual aesthetic of the shoes. I like the... I like the way that the symbiote can be used in design. Yeah. I don't like how anybody has used it so far <laughs> around this game. Yeah. Um, I will say I'm not a sneaker guy, right. but I know, I know sneaker culture is wild. Yeah. And, uh, for the Miles Morales game, yes, they announced a partnership with Adidas to, for him to wear Adidas in that game. However, this was a year after into the Spider-Verse where he wore Nikes mm -hmm. in the movie 
and that was a big deal. I remember that. I, that was a huge you can't controversy. Do that apparently. You can't have them switch from Nike to Adidas because that means something. Chat or comment section. Genuinely, I'm I'm being dead. I'm being dead ass serious. Explain to me what that means because I need to know. Well, I understand. Like, you like Spider Man, right? Uh, and and Miles Morales, and yeah. and you see that he's wearing these cool Nikes. So you're like, I want those Nikes. And then you get those Nikes, and then here's Miles Morales again wearing Adidas. And it's no, like, no, wait it was, a minute. It's like it's it's deeper than that. Like. If you wear Nikes, that means you're one type of person. But if you wear Adidas, that means you're uh, a completely okay. different type of person. Okay. It's like switching from Sega to Nintendo, says Hazard Biker. Okay. I can see that. Tom I mean, Holland wears Nikes even. I mean, even that's still a little silly, but... I mean, they still the, the the shoes from the last game looked cool. Mm -hmm. These these are stupid. I don't yeah, like I mean, I, he's not going to wear these in the game. These are for you to buy in real life, right? And you know, these are going to go for like five hundred dollars in the aftermarket. Oh yeah. And some some dude's going to walk up in a sneaker convention holding a wad of cash, going, "Give these to me now." Uh, supposedly, Lord of the Rings Gollum publisher made an apology and they uh, used AI to write. So it. apparently, uh, Lord of the Rings Gollum, we briefly touched upon it a while back. It's already considered the worst game of the year. Mm -hmm. um, very poorly made. Very, uh, very buggy. Uh, basically released broken. Um, the developer of the of the game apparently was working in uh, horrible conditions. Lots of crunch. Uh, using an engine that wasn't really optimized for what they were trying to do. Uh, poor management. Um, and then the when the game came out and it was in a bad state, the publisher of the game released an apology but apparently according to two anonymous sources they had chat gpt write the apology <laughs> yeah uh i mean i'm not surprised i'm a little bit surprised that they actually used chat gpt to write the apology but i guess the way development went on this game i, I shouldn't be they just don't care and yeah. and why should they the the game came out failed miserably there's no fixing it yeah, this is a no. case where no amount of updates is going to solve anything. Yeah. This is this is dead on arrival. Mm -hmm. So cut your losses. Why even have an apology at all? Just be like, ah, whoops. Yeah. Better luck next time, guys. Back to the drawing board. We'll make yeah. something else better. Apparently, they only had a budget of 15 million uh, euros. Only. only. Yeah. Well, it, they wanted it to be a big budget AAA game, and those usually cost a hundred million. Mm -hmm. So... You can't really make, you know, Shadow of Mordor, which is the last Lord of the Rings game, for fifteen million. You, so, it, just in what world is a game where you play as Gollum going to sell gangbusters? I mean, none. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I understand. Like you're, like you're trying to make. A, you, you're making a Lord of the Rings game. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a big deal. That's a big property. And you're only willing to spend 15 million euros on it. There's a new Lord of the Rings game coming out that looks also bad. Yeah, I think it's the... Uh, remember, Lord of the Rings is... Uh, the license is currently owned by Embracer Group, which ain't doing so well. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're constantly missing. Yeah. Uh okay, there's Animal Crossing Legos. Hooray! Here they are. Wow, pretty cool. That look, they all look weird. Tom Nook looks they do, weird. They look very weird. I don't like it. Is it just minifigs? No, I think there are sets. God bless you. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> uh, I don't see a. Oh wait. Yeah. Oh, Isabel's, the tree looks cool. Isabel's office at Tan Hall will be a. Uh, Another obvious choice for a Lego set. Oh wait, did they not? Did they I don't think the they did. I think it's, I think it's just the oh, no, here so far. This is a this is a leak. Uh, Animal Crossing is coming out. Animal Crossing set is coming out March twenty twenty four. The leaked information said to expect five kits ranging from a hundred and seventy piece set for fourteen dollars fourteen ninety nine and a five hundred and thirty five piece set for seventy five dollars. Seventy five dollars, not bad for a Lego. No, Lego is usually a lot yeah. of money. All right, uh, that's all the news. 
Hooray, we did we, it. We got through everything, but we also have. Oh, I muted it. Okay, ah. all right. Well, here you go. Do it again. And do it again. Word of the week! Word of the week! Word of the week! Yay. I'm just happy we didn't change it to X Gone Give It To You. <laughs> I do want to make a new jingle. Uh, I have two, actually. This is Hideki Nak Naga Numa, the mm -hmm. guy who did the music for Jet Grind Radio and Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. Yeah. I'm a bad boy. Sega also knows that I'm a bad boy. <laughs> I and, love it. And the second one that I have is Magic F Magic 4 FGC. Got the face buttons wired and working. It's a pumpkin with 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 arcade buttons in it. I, it's working. And it works, and he can play yeah. Street Fighter with it. Nice. All right. Twitter that's Twitter ah, Twitter ah, that was your Twitter of the week. <laughs> anyway. uh, I forgot to open up Discord. Me too. Oh my god. Now we're uh, in Discord talking to people who commented on last week's Wolf Den podcast. Uh, we got Max Lofmer who says, "Glad to have the boys back. Love these podcasts. Always premium content." And then he did this. <laughs> Nice. Tilted uh, 1013. Hey guys, I'm in the same boat as Will. Had a Series X for a while and then got my PS5 last week. My question is, was Will eligible for the for the PS5 upgrader program? I know the answer to this and it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, and if so, did he have issues getting it to work? I had to contact support for mine and they've been working on it for a minute. Uh, I am not eligible for it because I bought my system in August and it came in September. It came September 1st and you were only eligible if you bought it from September 20th. Wait, what's the upgrade program? I, I think I'm it, confused. Uh, it's if you, That's the one where you can get a free game. If you buy oh, one free game. Yeah. Okay. I got it confused with the PlayStation Plus... What was it called when the, when the PlayStation Five came out, and you bought a PlayStation Five, you oh, were eligible for a couple of free that PlayStation was the play, that Four was the games. PlayStation Plus collection. You should have that. I do because I logged into your system <laughs> yes. and claimed all those games. Okay, I, I got it confused. I yes. thought there there was a different. Thing. I'm going to lose that when my subscription ends on Christmas. But okay. you know, if I ever subscribe again, I'm going to lose a lot of games. I just realized. Like, just log in on my PlayStation <laughs> account. I don't it's fine. care. Um, the games I would want to play, I could probably just buy them for like okay. five dollars. It's too many games now. Yeah, there really are. Uh, Nero Vinjani. Uh, the Metacritic scores for the new Detective Pikachu game is out. It scored sixty nine. Nice. I actually saw sixty eight yesterday Ooh, when I looked. Ooh, not it's so It's different nice. now. It's not. Uh, it's not as nice. Looks horrible. I saw gameplay looking bad. Not a single lighting effect in the whole goddamn game. I mean, it looks like they just took the last game and said, make a new one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lover Mindy says, I really like I really like Farming Simulator. Now my feelings are hurt. <laughs> did we say something specifically targeting people who like Farming Simulator? We or have. did we say that Farming Simulator was dumb? We, it was something along those lines. Look, just because we don't like your... Favorite game doesn't mean you're dumb unless yeah. we specifically say people who like this game yes. are dumb, which which we may have said. <laughs> Look, they got simulators for everything. Honestly, Farming Simulator is like the least dumb. True. You know, it's it's better than a Power Wash Simulator because it feels like there's more to do. <laughs> I think I might rather play Power Wash Simulator. I've heard Power Wash Simulator. I heard it's very pretty soothing. good. Yeah, I heard it's a good game. What might be the weirdest simulator game goat simulator doesn't count because that's trying to be weird i remember back in the day there was sim ant okay where it was like a sim city ant farm yes like why an ant farm <laughs> i understand like flight simulator train simulator farming simulator i understand all this because like there's a lot of like mechanics and technical aspects to it and like you want like if you if you don't fly a plane or you're not a farmer, you want to like try your hand at something like advanced like that. Power wash simulator, I guess, 
you know, it puts you in like sort of a zen mode where you just like try to clean everything. Like an ant farm simulator, I'm having a hard time understanding the appeal of it. Chat is saying B simulator. B simulator. I'm also seeing Thief Simulator as a game. Uh, gas Station Simulator? Is that a real thing? <laughs> B Simulator. See, it can't be just a sim game that is like trying too hard to be weird. It's got to right. be like actually like you like you, you. This is for people who love bees, you know? Yeah. No, yeah. No, this is. Yep. Okay. This, I mean, I don't know what I was expecting. It's, right. it's a bee simulator. Uh, there was one more. Uh, m- Tamago Musubi. Tamago means egg. Oh. Uh, musubi means egg. <laughs> no, I think it, that's like a... It's like a... I think it is a, this is over rice? Is that what this is? Anyway, uh... PlayStation 5 dominates anywhere where internet is difficult to obtain. What? Think forward operating bases in the middle of nowhere, ships at sea, the console works without an internet connection, and the disc-based games can install the game, the complete game. Xbox going so heavily dependent on the internet basically seeded all sales to Sony. I agree that Xbox is definitely more of they're more egregious about the always online yeah. stuff. And it's just funny because like that was like a big reason why people didn't buy an Xbox One. True. Because they said it was gonna be an always online system. And now here we are, like ten years later, and they're like, let's try this again. Tamago Mas- Musubi is uh over rice and also spam. Uh very good problem solved we figured it out all right uh i wouldn't say playstation 5 dominates in that way because playstation 5 also has always online issues not yeah. as bad as xbox xbox is definitely the worst mm-hmm. offender but uh there's still a lot of games coming out for playstation that you need the internet to finish downloading and stuff yeah I don't think uh playstation is completely out of the woods on that but i will say that they've for the most part, have handled that better than Xbox has. Right. Okay, now we're in the chat real quick. Okay. Uh, also, X Gamer, thanks for the hundred bits. Did you see Borderlands Three is coming out on the Switch? I think so. Yes. I'm not interested. Yeah, me neither. And then he also said, "I guess those are the Speezy." LOL. I don't get. I don't remember what Spider-Man, that was. Spider Man, Yeezys, Speezys, the shoes. I get it. Uh, he also said, uh, Binary Domain was Sega's storyline shooter game. I don't remember that. Was it? When the hell did this come out? 2012. Oh, I remember this. I don't remember this I don't think all. I don't think it was uh, particularly... If this was in the guess the game, I would fail. I don't think this was a particularly well-liked game. It was like mid. It's a mid game. Yeah, it does not look great. It was developed by the Yakuza studio, though. Maybe if they t- made it a Yakuza game. Mm-hmm. Uh... Okay. Hey, Bob, what's your thoughts on Super Mario Bros. Wonder fans give the f- their first impressions? I- I'm not watching the video. <laughs> According to Spawn Wave, this game may be contender for Game of the Year. I don't think there's any world where uh, the Game of the Year is not Breath, uh, Breath of the Wild. Tears of the Kingdom? Tears, Tears of the, the Kingdom. Kingdom. I don't think there's any world where Tears of the Kingdom I think there's a world it. where Game of the Year is Baldur's Gate. Yes. I think Baldur's Gate will... I think it'll be... Sp- I don't know what the Game Awards is going to do. Yeah. The Game Awards might do Baldur's Gate, mm-hmm. which would be crazy because they seem to like Zelda. Right. Um. But I think... Considering all the different outlets, I think it will be split between Baldur's Gate and uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Mm-hmm. I think Famitsu will go Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, a lot of Japanese companies will go Tears of the Kingdom. But... I thought I saw somewhere like somebody had like tried to guess what the game of the year was going to be, and it was like Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate, Resident Evil Four. Um... That was this year. Yeah. Oh, 
uh, Spider-Man, Mario Wonder, and I think like one or two others. But like, it's it's got to be down to like Tears of the Kingdom and Baldur's Gate. Those like, yeah, dominated conversation. One of them is Starfield, but uh, yeah, I don't think Starfield that doesn't make Starfield's it. Starfield's not winning anything. No, I'm not. It'll win something, but it's not gonna deserve yeah. it. Um, this year is pretty crazy. Yeah, there's a lot of great shit this year. Super Mario Wonder will be one of my favorite games of the year for sure. Yeah, but uh, I game of the year, I I can at least secede that. Yeah, uh, it it it's not gonna be just the by the nature of the type of game that it is, it's not gonna be anywhere near a yeah. Breath of the a Tears of the Kingdom. Tuned in on my honeymoon cruise because it's chill time. Have you guys heard of the game maker on PlayStation called Dreams? It looks wild. Not sure if it's super relevant. It's pretty old by now. Yes. But isn't it free? Uh, didn't they shut it down? No. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was like they like rolled it into PlayStation Plus or something. Uh, Or maybe it was just one of the PlayStation Plus games. Dreams is an interactive create a system video game developed by Media Molecule and published in February 2020. Really? I thought it was out for longer than that. Me too. In 2023, Media Molecule announced that they would end live service support for Dreams in September of this year in favor of an unannounced new project. Servers will uh, Server support will continue, as will bug fixes, in-game curation, official streams, and community engagement and promotions. The game will remain available for sale after this date. Okay. Oh, so you can't... So it's done. Right. I mean, you can still buy it and, like, can I mess play- around with it. Can I play other people's levels? Yeah, I don't know what they mean by uh, f- live ser- live service support will end, but the online ser- online server support will continue as will bug fixes, in-game curation, streams, and community engagement and promotion. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't understand. Means, Somebody yeah. who plays Dreams, uh, tell me if you can play other people's games yeah. or levels or whatever you call them. Uh, Wildfire says uh, Animal Crossing sets are revealed, and they okay. they have been revealed. Okay. Uh, here they are. Ooh, cute. <laughs> uh, they're kind of small, kind of small little sets. Okay. They're like actual like classic Lego sets, as opposed to like the Mario ones, which are like these big interactive games. Yeah, I don't like how uh. Nintendo was like, yeah, you can work with us, but we got to be weird about it. Yeah. I don't like that. I'd rather just be more traditional Lego. Uh, Medicine just says, a new Oculus headset came out today, and there doesn't seem to be much hubbub. Is VR officially old hat now, or still waiting for the right hardware to go mainstream? I think that VR is dying. And... It is waiting for the right technology. I think the only right technology is glasses like what you're wearing right, right. now. Right. That's the only way that VR is gonna gonna get anywhere. I don't know if dying is the right word. I think it's just in like a state of like very, very niche user base. Like if you're already bought into VR, then you're into VR. If you haven't yet, then you you, you aren't going to. Well, I think there's a lot of people who bought into VR and they're just collecting dust. Yeah, uh, that too. I I, th- I think that it's it's a lull right now that yeah. people aren't as excited about it as they once were. Because it is a lot to get strapped yeah. in, you know? It's yeah. a lot different than just turning on a computer. Like, why would I want to strap in to watch a Netflix movie? Yeah. You know, it doesn't make any sense. And, like, I know people are saying, like, well, when the Apple Vision Pro comes out, like, that'll be the game changer. I don't think it no, will. absolutely especially not. Especially because at that price... It's a lot of money. Yeah. And again, why am I strapping in to go on my computer? Because that's yeah. all you're doing on the Apple yeah. Vision Pro. So if they, I mean, if they release a non-pro version for under $1,000, maybe, but I don't see it. If it was $3,000 and it was like your glasses, yeah. fine. Right. I understand the appeal, you know? Mm-hmm. Imagine having a computer strapped to you at all times. That yeah. would be sick. Um, but it's not. It looks like a huge pain in the ass yeah. to put on. So anyway, and I think it's metal, so it's going to be heavy as hell. Yeah. So whatever. Uh, 
most people that I know bought VR just usually sticks to VR chat. Mm. Even VR chat, you could play it on desktop. Yeah. Hogwarts Legacy being game of the year would be hilarious. That'd be so funny. <laughs> I don't think people care about that game anymore. No, that was a that like came flashing up in the pan. It was it really was. Uh, everyone is strapped with computers. They're called smartphones. Yeah. Oh, uh, I got a DM. You know what? I don't know if I want to dox the person. <laughs> I read you. I, I got a DM about the iPhone. I read it. Thank you. I'll DM you back one of these days. <laughs> uh, he was just telling me how I could get the, the, the new one. And uh-huh. I, and it kind of worked. I did it and it kind of oh. worked. But uh, also, speaking of which, big, big problems. Oh, no. Mom called me today. Oh, no. She said, I got a text. You probably got the same text. No. I got a text that uh, the, I can upgrade to the iPhone 15 for free. I did not get that. I was like, no, you can't. They're going to get you some other way. She's like, we got to go to the AT&T store. Can you come with me tomorrow? I'm like, I'm like <sighs> no. They're just going to make you pay for it in the bill through some other way. I don't know how many times like we can explain this to her. It's so it's so frustrating. It's frustrating that she, that she doesn't listen to me, but it's also it's more frustrating that this is how these cell phone carriers make the most money is by being like, "Hey, look, you can get this for free." And then they fucking tack on all this bullshit on the other side. And they hide it really well. I'm proud of you because you found out that mom doesn't listen to you at an earlier age than I found out mom doesn't <laughs> listen to you. And it's time to give up and just move on. You Sometimes you just have to say things three or four times. Yeah. I just happen to be on the fifth time about this cell phone <laughs> bullshit. Uh, they, now they're on the iPhone 8. Yes. Our parents. They need an upgrade. They need an upgrade. I, I can- have the 11, which is I thought was old. I have the 11. I'm not upgrading yet. Uh, if I keep telling them just buy it outright and switch I everything do. over. I, no, I said I'm going to the Apple store and I am buying it. The, the thing, what I found out though, AT&T wants $10 if you activate it. So like if you buy it from the Apple store now, it asks what carrier you have. And if you select AT&T, it says $10 activation fee. I think if you buy it, if you if you buy it without a carrier though, you just put the SIM card in. So, that was my plan. Mm-hmm. There is no SIM card slot in the new iPhones. There is a... Uh, so, you know how when you upgrade your phone, you can transfer everything over? Yeah. Like, you just point your... Uh, you point your old phone's camera at the new phone, like the QR code that comes up, and, like, it just beams everything over? Yeah. It'll transfer the SIM card data to the eSIM. Okay, so... What you're telling me is, I don't want the guy at the Apple store to transfer my stuff. I want to take it home and do it myself. Exactly. Okay. That's Thank what you. you want. Thank you. We're going to do that. And then if I have an issue with the eSIM, then I'll have to go back and pay the 10 stupid dollars. Yeah. AT&T could be like, oh, we see you have a new phone now. But, right. I mean, they haven't. When I used to just, uh, this SIM card I've had since the my fucking, what was it called? The One Plus, yeah, remember that the yeah. One Plus Android phone. I've had the same SIM card yeah. since then. And no, no, I bought that on my own. So it was before that. What what was before the One Plus? You had like a Sam. You had a Galaxy S three, and then you. I think you had an iPhone. No, you had an you had an S three, and then in the One Plus, and then you went to iPhone, which was yeah. The 7. So it had to have been the S three. Yeah. So I I think I've been using the same SIM card since the Galaxy S three. Yeah. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? D- didn't they get smaller? The they SIM did, cards? yeah. I can't possibly be using the same SIM card. I don't know when I would have gotten. I it. don't know either. Anyway, uh, Apple Store is scam artists too. I listen. I've I've gotten the whole spiel about Apple Care before. Yeah. I'll be damned if I'm signing up for that. Hey, Will, did you know that uh, Warner Brothers might be owned by Universal? I think they might be looking to sell this time. Warner Brothers has been like trying to like save its ass for like the past few years now. So it wouldn't have surprised me if all of Universal was always like, yeah, come over here. We got money. Does Universal have money? 
They might have more money than Warner Brothers. Okay. I got a SIM card punch to make them smaller. Did I make mine smaller? You could just cut them to make them smaller. I might have done that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us with your ear rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Anchor. No, it's not Anchor anymore. Um, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, whatever Google Podcasts is going to be called. No matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Podcast services need to stop dying or closing so that I can get the end slate right. Fuck's sake. <laughs> um, I don't know who to raid. Let's raid Beta Sixty Four. Remember him? He mm-hmm. does. He does YouTube videos. Uh, what the hell is he doing? Barnyard? All right, dude. I don't <laughs> understand. But that's who we're raiding. Wood says Val time. All right, I need uh, like an hour. All right, buddy. <laughs> Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. I'll see you later. Oh, hey, I posted a video today. You should go watch it because it's a seven out of ten on YouTube's back end. <laughs> Bye. Bye.